these new ones are very sensitive, guys. Just going to warn you. Your mics are very sensitive. So, caution. Caution, Will Robinson. I'm saying it from experience <laughs> myself. Okay. Hey, okay, we're ready? Good evening, and welcome to the October 7th, 2020 Board of Education regular business meeting. We will now begin with the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. O oh God, we pray to administer that which is just in all educational policies, being ever mindful of your guidance Stir us to action with love, wisdom, and understanding. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight in person with our colleagues, as well as our colleagues who hope to join us one point very soon. March 4th was the last time we all joined together in this boardroom. And um, it's a very humbling experience um, to be able to now join in person. Our protocols in place have given us the peace of mind to understand that um, we will be able to resume our meetings healthily under kind guidance of the health officer and I want to thank everyone for all the hard work and effort to rearrange our boardroom was sincerely an undertaking and I'd be remiss not to recognize Mr. Bob Mosier and his incredible production team and uh, Mr. Chiknovich and his facilities team for making this possible tonight, and Dr. Alato for his um, guidance throughout this entire process. Absolutely. I believe one of our board members. Um, has asked for a point of privilege and um, is granted that two minutes. Ms. Schalheim. We always have to remember um, patients um, in our environments. We uh, still have limitations, and so uh, we may have um, occasional moments of silence in between people speaking. So with grace and compassion, we will proceed. We're going to table momentarily and hold the uh, point, uh, the request of privilege, and uh, take that on um, concluding recognitions. Um, so, um, for a uh, next item is item 2.03, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion has been made and seconded. Do I have any dissent? Seeing no dissent, the meeting minutes are approved as written. Next item is 2.04, establish the agenda order. Ms. Ellis. I'm sorry, I'm getting used to this too. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, I, I move that we 
add an agenda item um, uh, reopening our schools in the hybrid model um, as items or before item 7.01. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Oh, a, mo a motion and a second has been made um, for the establishment of the agenda order. Ms. Howell, please call roll. Ms. Ellis? Aye. Mr. Grannon? Aye. Ms. Schalheim? She is a yes. Ms. Antoine? No. Oh, uh, okay. Um, we'll get back to Ms. Schalheim. Please Ms. continue Antoine? roll. Aye. Mr. Gilliland? Aye. Mr. Lyde? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Nay. I'm sorry, is that a nay or yay? Nay. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Schalheim? Ms. Corkino. Aye. Motion passes 7-2. Okay. Um, as a point of administrative note, the reopening request is now item 7.01 and remuneration is 7.02 administrative personnel appointments. It's 7.03 personnel under other action items, 7.04 new course approvals. 7.05 Eastport Elementary School third party project, et cetera. And 7.06 now is Mead Heights Elementary School addition schematic design. Please make annotations as appropriate. Okay, we have an, we do have an amendment passed. I'm willing to entertain a motion to adopt the I have no idea uh, why people can't hear me, but I can't participate meaningfully if I'm, if I can't be heard. Yes, we can. We can hear you now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, do I have a motion uh, to adopt agendas edit, as amended? No motion and second has been made. Can, can you all hear me now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So are we going to do roll call order? Can we make sure everyone is, is heard during this meeting? Yes, you're visibly um, seen and heard, so um, that the, the roll call would not be necessary because the public can see you along with us. So how do I raise my hand or indicate that I am that I want to participate or speak well, or? Well, we're, um, if we could um, go over that in one second because we're right about ready to um, take a vote. Um, but most certainly we would take roll call in the order for our, all of our business, just like we have been virtually. What are we voting on? Because I, I'm, I'm also having a hard time hearing you as well. Uh, to, uh, item 2.04 is to establish the agenda order as amended. Okay. And so Ms. Howe is calling roll. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm, I'm not sure I can meaningfully participate if I can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, the board's going to need to stand at ease for a moment, um, and we'll be back in a minute. Are we off?
And we are now ready for vote. Um, Ms. Howe, please call roll. Ms. Ellis. Aye. Mr. Grannon. Ms. Shalheim. Um, I didn't get a chance to, to weigh in, but I, I believe there was another motion distributed to everyone prior, so I'm a in, I'm in, I'm in nay, because that wasn't heard first. Ms. Antoine? Aye. Mr. Gilliland? Aye. Mr. Lyde? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. I mean, nay. I'm sorry, nay. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Grannon? Ms. Corkadel? Aye. Motion passes 6 2. Well, the good news is our very next item is item 2.05, which is recognitions. So, um, Mr. Gilliland, if you may, please. Thank you, Madam President. In my able to be heard with this. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, tonight is a very special night uh, for our school system and, and perhaps one of our, our most important partners in this county uh, and uh, someone I would refer to as an AACPS partner and friend. Uh, and for me personally, uh, it, it is very special because I've had the privilege of working with um, the last two presidents of Anne Arundel Community College when I was the student member here, my seatmate on the dais, uh, now at the other side of the room, was uh, Dr. Tom Florestano. And then uh, later I had the privilege of working with Dr. Marty Smith um, and uh, we, we worked to revise the Cade formula. And then I had the privilege of working with Dr. Lindsay uh, for some time on the Anne Arundel Workforce yeah. Development Corporation. So it's great to, to see her here and, and to be the one to read this on behalf of my colleagues. The Board of Education is pleased to recognize an esteemed community leader. She is one of our key AACPS partners, an important colleague in higher education, and the sixth president of Anne Arundel Community College, Dr. Dawn Lindsay. Dr. Lindsay has worked in community colleges across the country for several decades, leading to her current position as president of our county's beloved community college, AACC. Her talented servant leadership has driven Anne Arundel Community College to earn local, regional, and state and national awards, most recently for their response to the coronavirus when they transitioned over 1,200 classes from face-to-face to virtual teaching and learning efficiently and effectively over a period of a few oh, short months. Weeks. Others around the world know AACC for innovation, creativity, strong academics, a solid faculty and dedicated leaders. We know them for all these reasons and much more. We are very fortunate to call the men and women of AACC our friends and colleagues. The relationship between Anne Arundel Community College and Anne Arundel County Public Schools affords our high school students the opportunity to earn articulated credits, proficiency credits, dual credits, and enter the early college access program, which gives county high school students a chance to earn community college credits at a reduced tuition cost. In recent years, AACPS students have earned numerous articulated credits workforce certificates in cargo and logistics, drone licenses, homeland security, business, math, sociology, and engineering college degree pathway credits, not to mention full associate of arts or associate of science degrees, all while still in high school. Whether students are earning proficiency college credit from work completed in high school courses or taking AACC Homeland Security courses inside Mead High or participating in a college or career workshop on the Arnold or Arundel Mills campuses, the engagement and learning is always top notch. Additionally, many of our future certified teachers get their start in our joint AACPS AACC resident teacher certification program known fondly to us as the Magical RTC program. 
the success rate of this program has been nothing short of stellar. Moreover, our teachers, counselors, and other staff are also AACC students. Our professional development partnership allows us to contract amazing work, uh, conduct amazing workshops and PD sessions for our AACPS staff taught by your staff at Anne Arundel Community College. Dr. Lindsay, thank you for your leadership at the helm of Anne Arundel Community College, but most importantly, thank you for your partnership and your friendship. I know that many AACPS staff members consider your staff part of our family. Your collaborative spirit, collegiality, commitment to equality, equity, and drive for excellence are a record of success to be applauded. Together, we educate Anne Arundel County's citizens so they are able to have a strong foundation on which to build healthy personal and professional lives for decades to come. You have been and are key to making this important work happen. We thank you and honor you today for your leadership with a citation that for social distance purposes you have across the room. Congratulations, Dr. Lindsay. Thank you, Mr. Gillen, and thank you so much, Dr. Lindsay. Um, I think Terry said it all, but gratitude once again. Uh, greatly appreciated. We have one more recognition this evening, and it is my distinct pleasure and privilege to acknowledge the many contributions that Ryan Vogelin has made to Anne Arundel County Public Schools. His regularly partners with other divisions on various initiatives such as the implementation of second step curriculum in all elementary and secondary schools and activities to promote mental health in our virtual learning curriculum. In addition to his current responsibilities, which include oversight of the work of our counselors, psychologists, social workers, and, and pupil personnel workers, as well as our expanded mental health partners, he has actively collaborated with many of our county agencies and organizations. Throughout the time of COVID shutdown, he has helped to provide services to our students and families through focused connection. He also works to help manage the unfortunate incidences of trauma on our students and our communities. He is focused on the health and safety of students as we strive to eliminate the opportunity gap. His most recent contribution, co-chairing the mental health task force with Adrian Mickler, who's with us this evening, is a testament to his collaborative na nature and diligent work ethic, as well as his compassion and dedication to supporting efforts to improve the mental health and security of all of our children. Ryan has served on many Anne Arundel County committees, including the Youth Suicide Awareness Leadership Team, County Opioid Intervention Team, IT Senior Policy Group, the Anne Arundel County Mental Health Agency Board of Directors, and the Partnership for Children, Families, and Youth Board. And one of the evenings we're honoring him tonight is most recently he was featured in a District Administration Magazine article for all the accomplishments we have cited above. We are so very proud of you, Ryan, and it's an honor and privilege to work with you. Thank you for your service, sir. Include our recognitions. Uh, Dr. Lindsay would like to say a couple words. Thank you very much. Uh, first uh, off, I want to thank you for turn uh, the mic. I, I believe just press the little. Yeah. There we go. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. I'm now. Sorry, thank there you we very go. Much. Uh -huh. um, I want to thank you for the honor. This very, very unexpected honor. Actually, um, it's very much appreciated. I think when it's so unexpected. So thank you. 
on behalf of all my colleagues at Anne Arundel Community College, we, um, I, I gracefully accept this on the part of the college, so thank you very much. I also want to thank Dr. Arlotto and his team for the partnership that we've shared. Um, he and I were hired pretty close together, and um, we reached out to each other pretty much right, at, right when we got together, so it was great, and we've been working together ever since. Um, this pandemic is really taking a, a toll on everyone in the leadership role, and unfortunately, we all know there's no guidebook on how to handle a pandemic. Um, so navigating through uh, the pandemic and the leadership that we all have to provide and this board is providing as well is difficult, but I was sharing with some people earlier today. Um, I actually think it's brought out the best in many, many people. Um, people are working much more collaboratively and collegially, and I think we've all kind of figured out what our priorities really are and should be. So I think there's actually been an unknown uh, positive about this. Um, I know that with my team, we consider every step that we're making as we're navigating um, through this pandemic, keeping our workforce and our students number one and their safety as our priority, as I know you are. Um, I know also I'm addressing the needs of 41,000 adult students, and you've got more than double that with the number of students that you're dealing and addressing and educating here through the K through 12 uh, system. So um, I wanna thank the board for your leadership too. I know that you're making some very, very difficult and tough decisions and taking everything into consideration, um, but it's not easy. It's not easy being a leader in this role. Um, again, I just want to say thank you to Dr. Arlotto directly as well as his team. Um, many of the people that are behind me right now that we've had the opportunity to develop these very, very strong relationships with, and I can tell you that I know that our college and um, AACPS is very, very dedicated to the county and the students that we serve. Um, we've got an amazing county to work in and great colleagues to work with, so thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Arlotto, for your support. Um, Maureen back here, the troops and everybody that's supporting George. It's been, uh, it's been an experience, and uh, there's no other county I would want to be doing this in than Anne Arundel Community, so thank you very much. Once again, thank you very much, Dr. Lindsay. Greatly appreciated your leadership. Item 3.0 is public comment. Ms. Howell, please report items not contained on the agenda that the board received for consideration. Thank you. So as of the press release and 12 p.m. on Tuesday, we received and posted 129 public comments. Um, thereafter, we have received 210, which have been sent to the board in advance of today's meeting. Anything that comes in thereafter, we will surely share with the board members. Um, after tonight's meeting. Thank you very much. Item 4.01 is the Mental Health Task Force Report. And um, joining us this evening is County Executive Stuart Pittman, who, will, um, who we will begin with. Thank you for joining us, sir. <laughs> Thank you for cleaning it up. Um, um, well, <clears throat> I remember coming here <clears throat> after this board had directed the, the, the staff to do this report, and I said, Anne Arundel County wants in too, because we have agencies that um, work on mental health, and I think it's pretty obvious that when you work on mental health issues, and you can see from this report, that you don't just look at the individual who has mental health issues, you look at the community that surrounds that individual. And uh, that's what this report does. If you, um, when you do get a chance, if you haven't already to read it, um, <clears throat> I would encourage people to get to pages nine through 12 um, from meeting number three, which is the one where they go through all of the eight areas and they have recommendations that haven't all been vetted. I know those aren't the priority ones, but it's the complete list of recommendations and they're, they're interesting, they're fascinating. Um, I look forward to, um, to working on them. Um, so Adrian Mickler has, has put a lot of work into this and Ryan Vogelin has put a lot of work into this. I think they did most of, of the, the work here and I wanna thank them um, for, for a great job. And we all know that uh, a plan is just a plan and that it needs to have um, implementation, it needs to have um, metrics for implementation. And so this is really, really just to start. Um, and, and I also just wanna say that you can't look at this plan outside of the context of where we are right now. I know that when it began, there was no COVID, or at least we didn't know about it yet. And, and, uh, and now we're in the middle of it. 
And, you know, I really, at the beginning of, of COVID, we did a, a town hall with Dr. George Everly, who's a um, psychologist who works on um, recovery from disasters. And, and he was warning us about the mental health impacts of COVID. And, and we saw as the, as the pandemic grew and as our economy was affected by it, um, that poverty and a lack of a safety net during the economic downturn were made very clear and laid bare by COVID. Um, racism and biases um, that are deeply embedded in our institutions were made very clear, not only by COVID, but by the killing of George Floyd. And, uh, and our community responded to that in the middle of all this. And, and the thing that COVID has done to just about everybody um, is created isolation. And when you think about isolation and you think about mental health, um, I'm not an expert, but there aren't many. When you think about the causes of isolation, um, you're really getting at the root of the problems. And so, so many of these recommendations get at those issues. So much of what we have to do is about bringing people together. And so the, uh, the Mental Health Task Force and the Opportunity Gap Task Force, they'll have a lot of overlap. A lot of the work that county agencies are doing overlaps. A lot of the work that these two people do overlap. And so one of the things that this has done is, is brought people together and has them talking. The list of agencies that worked on this is, is really extensive and that's exciting in itself. And the last thing I wanna say is that I, I remember back was at least a year ago, I think you were there, a group of students um, who had organized under the banner of Our Minds Matter came into my office and we met and it was clear that they were really on to something, something big. I didn't have any answers. You didn't have any answers. <laughs> they didn't have answers. Uh, but, but that it was something, something bigger than just the incidents that had motivated them, um, the, the suicides of their friends that had mo motivated them to organize. And I really do think that what they were after and what we're all, I mean, these big questions that we can't answer easily, the important questions really are about connecting with one another and overcoming the isolation of COVID, the isolation um, of, uh, um, that a lot of young people experience um, right now, especially. So um, I'm looking forward to getting to work on this. Um, I encourage everybody to hold us accountable. We'll hold each other accountable and, and really implement some of these recommendations. Um, and then I can't, since I'm here, and there are lots of people outside in their cars, I, I, I want to just acknowledge what's going on outside, that um, they've they got a, a good turnout of people who are, um, um, I'm not sure who all of them are. I think a lot of them are teachers. A lot of them are organized by the teachers union. Um, but I, could, I also want to say that I have gotten, in the last 48 hours, hundreds of emails, as I, the same ones you have gotten. I think we've been CC'd on all of them most of them, and they've been really thoughtful. I, I gotta admit, I haven't read them all, um, but they've been really thoughtful, um, parents mostly, and while I came out on Monday and I was, um, I said that I supported the plan, and I do, because I think it's a good plan, I support the metrics, I really do feel that um, now we're in a moment where it's time to listen, and it's time to really look at all of the impacts of what a plan like this, particularly hybrid learning, means on families and on teachers. And, um, and I, you know, I was an old or community organizer who used to organize stuff like what's going on out there. So um, I know that some people take it personally. Some people are a little made nervous by it. And I would just encourage you to not take it personally, uh, to listen. And, and hopefully, you know, we can, we can really learn from one another and make the plan that's on the books a better plan and then implement it. So good luck to you all. Thank you very much, County Executive Pittman. Um, we're going to actually start, um, Ms. Ellis was a, um, it, it, she is the one that brought forth the idea to the board uh, that we embrace. And um, before we get started with the report, um, we had a couple of thoughts that we would like to share with our two uh, chairs of the task force. Ms. Ellis, please. Sorry, I'm getting used to this mic. <laughs> um, first of all, I, I really need to thank you, County Executive uh, Pittman, um, first 
thanks for being here tonight. But um, yeah, I had an idea one day um, last or spring of 2019, um, and I brought it to my colleagues on the board, and I was overwhelmed by the instant unanimous support on this idea that we need to study this. We, we have um, a lot of students who are struggling for a variety of reasons, and not just a matter of how can we help them, but how can we prevent this from this trend from continuing? And, um, and then, so the board um, asked Dr. Alato, what can we do about this? We wanna start a task force present something to us, how we can move forward. And I was just in awe that instantly the, the county jumped in, said, we wanna be a part of this. And it grew and it was, um, it was amazing. The first meeting I attended uh, was, how many people were in that room? 80 some? Yeah. Um, all these people coming together, experts. And experts include students, experts include parents, experts, um, but lots of, um, law enforcement, mental health professionals. Um, it was just a remarkable beginning. And um, so I am here tonight on behalf of the board to honor Mr. Vogelin and Ms. Mickler. Um, we want to sincerely thank you. We're gonna present both of you. Um, and I'm gonna read, read, read what it says. Ms. Mickler and Mr. Vogelin, it is not enough for us to merely say thank you for your invaluable contributions that enabled the task force to successfully meet the objectives set for it by the Anne Arundel County Board of Education. Representing a wide variety of interests, you devoted countless hours and shared with us your creative ideas, heartfelt opinions, sage advice, and a wealth of valuable information. We can see clearly your visions of hope for the future of our students. We can clearly see your bold ideas about how such visions can be realized within a host of richly diverse community settings. We hope that this report effectively synthesizes the visions and key ideas, some of the remarkable examples and the recommendations which flowed from your leadership discussions. You are truly a champion of our students' mental health and overall well-being and we extend our deepest appreciation and gratitude. It is your extraordinary accomplishments and the achievements of others like you across the country, which have already resulted in some real progress toward a healthier, stronger, and more resilient student. Citizens in the communities we represent through their support have helped make this step in our bright future a reality. It is the expressed will of our citizens that has evoked such a positive response and a commitment from our school system and government to take action and to help us realize our dreams, desires, and goals for a sustainable future. The findings of the task force have clearly reinforced the critical importance of building effective linkages between individuals, nonprofits, and grassroots groups and the institutions which comprise local, state, national, and international communities. Through such linkages, we must maintain an open dialogue, form innovative public-private partnerships, and establish productive new str strategic alliances. Continuing experience, uh, continuing, I am so sorry. Continuing open dialogue will feed our understanding of complex issues and enable each of us to benefit from the experiences of others. Linkages between diverse organizations will germinate productive outcomes and create the knowledge needed to meet coming challenges. The promise you give us is a prosperous, socially equitable, and healthy life for each student. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ellis. Um, it's my understanding that uh, Ms. Schollheim's uh, technical issue has been resolved, and so before we proceed, I, I would be remiss. She did request a, a point of privilege, and I think it's fairly important in the moment, so I would like to uh, pardon me for one moment. Ms. Schollheim, 
um, if you're ready. Yes, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, I just wanted to say thank you to the staff again and to uh, Dr. Aletto and very specifically to Mr. Mosier and the wonderful production um, staff. ...where you identify a public health program that is so good that you can measure the economic benefits to the private sector. So insurance companies and employers and hospitals, and then you you sell it to them. You basically in, encourage them to invest um, in their own future. And um, so the future of crisis response in Anne Arundel County is very bright. And so um, that's a follow up that I think we're going to move forward with. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I would to tie into what what they're saying. I mean, many of the recommendations that we saw there were about training, education and on a on a more global level and we do a lot of trainings we do a lot of um educating but are we hitting everyone and are we doing it in a consistent concerted way that that we can that we can measure to make sure that everyone's getting that information you know many of our staff and some students and some parents have had mental health first aid training but have we done that in a comprehensive way so that to me would be kind of looking where we already have some of these trainings you know, our equity office is, is doing and has done a, a lot of um, training around anti-racism and discrimination. So where, where do we tie in with the trainings that have already been happening? And then how do we kind of do it from a more global perspective? And I think especially with our parents and supporting our parents to overcome that mental health stigma, because if we can support parents with that, you know, we had that conversation with the, the panel where we talked about this with Drake and the other students. And, and um, when, when we start to, have everyone having conversations about mental health we overcome stigma and we we just we we um we grow by leaps and bounds so i think like the a lot of the, the education and the training that, those are the recommendations and, and those would be my you know that would be where i would want to focus on moving forward i i love that um i so a number of months ago i attended i, I believe it was all day on a saturday mental health uh first aid um for kids and Boy, that was an eye-opening day. Um, I learned so much, and absolutely the entire community can benefit from that training, and it really does take away the stigma um, mm -hmm. uh, once you understand it all. So thank you for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. um, the crisis response team, I have, I've seen them in a number of situations now. Um, one of our county tragedies, uh, I, I saw them at an event. I, I asked them, who takes care of you? <laughs> um, because they, they go through an awful lot to make sure that everyone's okay. Um, and, but they do, they take care of each other. Um, so I would love to see that expanded. Thank you for mentioning that. And I'll call out others to, <laughs> to ask questions. You know, I could talk all day. Thank you, or ask questions all day. Thank you very much, Ms. Ellis. Mr. Granite? Yeah, can you, all, can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, President Wolfgang. Um, I don't have any specific questions at this time. Um, I'll just say I think uh, everyone is very grateful to the task force for their timely work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Grant. I greatly appreciate it. Ms. Schalheim. Um, yes, can you all hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, first, I want to say thank you for 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 doing this. Um, thank you to all who are involved. Uh, this is um, pretty incredible, and and the the it looks like from what I can see, I was sent the PowerPoint. The breadth of of uh, areas you all focused on is pretty massive. So um, I'm really I'm really kind of blown away by this. Um, I can't wait to read the, the report, which I assume will be sent to us afterwards. Um, I did have a, a specific question under stress and pressure, and I wondered how sleep um, feeds into that, and if you all researched that or evaluated that in any way. Yes, actually, we, we did, and of course, sleep is very important to um, the growth and well-being of our students and their, their mental wellness. Um, the committee looked at different ways that, um, you know, scheduling and other 
activities that the youth are involved in affect their sleep and it is certainly a concern and it will be um, you know kind of woven into some of the um, implementation of recommendations as we can it just did not rise to the um, level of the most important based on the committee's other work but it certainly oh, was course. consideration um but important nonetheless were were age appropriate healthy and safe start times um, part of that discussion that um that subcommittee brought up more sleep as a as a education in terms of parents like adrian said in terms of over scheduling um working on balance with kids and and making sure that kids were getting the right you know, amount of sleep, eating a, a great diet, self-care, but nothing specific related to start times was, was discussed within those subcommittees that were part of the report. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I, I, I hope that when we talk about scheduling that, that, that's, um, that that's understood and recognized because when, when kids pre COVID were on buses in the five o'clock hour um, or starting school and on, during times, um, not conducive to their uh, age and, and development and or walking to or from school in the dark. I mean, that that stress and pressure as well. And so I just was curious about that. Um, I don't have any other specific questions having not, um, you know, read it in its um, entirety, but I'm really grateful for you all being here and for your um, wonderful presentation tonight. And I can't wait to dive into this and see how we can um, make some positive changes um, within our school system, build on what is already great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Schalheim. Ms. Antwine. Thank you, President Corkadell, County Executive Pittman. Thank you for your time and for being here. Um, Ms. Michler and, of course, Mr. Um, Foster. Thank you. All three of you have taken the lead on very important matters in our system, our county, our state, our world. And you led the charge on that. It had to be a heavy lift for you all, but I have seen the results of your efforts firsthand. I want to send out a personal thank you for what you all have done for our veterans and our military families. Um, mental health support is, is important across the board the experiences th that those families go through are a unique set. And I thank you for your understanding in that and your concentration there. I would also like to thank Ms. Ellis. Thank you for a year ago or so, seeing the foresight that you shared in this. It, it has meant a lot to our communities and it is changing the way we do business and our understanding of mental health. So thank each of you. Um, I see a lot of cross-reference with the task forces that we have. Those cross-reference, um, those cross-engagements can often create, uh, I, I would say, a venue for taking something for granted. When the same subjects are just in your face all the time, it also encourages desensitizing. So I would, um, I would look forward to the other report so that we can identify areas where they're not necessarily the same in their approach, but they're the same in their solutions to include the, um, the joint task force that's coming up as well. I'm looking forward to that. But I really thank you all because this is not just sitting in a room for you. It's, it's being exposed to experiences and being exposed to people um, who are suffering in many ways. So thank you for your support and your work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Antwine. Mr. Gilliland. Thank you, Madam President, and, and thanks to uh, each of you, Mr. County Executive, you, you know, anytime the county executive comes to an event, it, it, it highlights the importance of it. So, so I appreciate you uh, personally being here. I, I, th I think Ms. Antwine said something that um, you know, really struck a chord for me. And 
I'm going to paraphrase her words a little bit, but you know, when it's, you know, so to speak, in, in your face, um, you do take it for granted sometimes. And, and I don't know that we as a county school system or otherwise celebrate the successes because um, uh, you know, we're, we're often focusing on, on the response that, that your agency's taken, but a lot of successes are happening when you're able to prevent uh, the bad stuff. And I won't say what any of that is. I, I think we can all use our imagination. So I, I appreciate what you're doing. And I, I also you know, appreciate what the school system has done in, in many of these areas, certainly that align uh, with, with those recommendations. Um, but what it does is it, it perhaps allows us to fine tune our practice, improve the practice, make it a best practice. Um, and and I, I, I think that's you know really something that for me is a, a takeaway here. So I, I just wanna again just say thank you. Uh, very very much appreciate the work that you've done. Certainly as, as Ms. Antwine said about a year ago, um, Mrs. Ellis uh, made the motion uh, on the dais uh, that, that sparked this. And um, you know, again, I just can't you know, say thank you enough for, for the good work that you do each and every day through the warm line and, 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 and otherwise. And again, Mr. County Executive, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Gillen. Mr. Lund? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, my colleagues have pretty well covered the waterfront, mm -hmm. but I do want to very sincerely thank you for the hard work that you put in on the behalf of our citizens and the students in Anne Arundel County. It's quite significant, and I look forward to see us making progress together as we try and implement many of the recommendations you put forward tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Live. Ms. Hummer? Um, yes, I just want to echo what my colleagues say. I, I think one of the great things that will come from this is that we were able to do a comprehensive look and make sure that our agencies are all communicating with each other, that we're not doubling, but we're not missing anyone either. And so I look forward to diving into the details and really um, studying it. But thank you so much for all the hard work. I hope this will be a great blueprint going forward for all of our groups to work with together. Thank you, Ms. Hummer. Mr. Smith? Yes, thank you. Um, just the best is yet to come. You know, I know nothing but greatness is going to come from the task force. Mm -hmm. I know that mental health is very important for our staff and students, and I just want to highlight a few things. One of your recommendations was give students more opportunities to talk about the stuff that's going on. As you all know, we have our series, Let's Talk Justice, and I think we're way ahead there. And spawning off of that, Schools such as Arundel and Mead, I know that they have their own groups that they use so students can just come together and just express what's going on. And not just express it, but really see the change that happens from it. And then also social justice lessons and free mental well-being and health activities. I think we also achieved that in our um, uh, community wellness block every Wednesday morning. Ashley had it today. And we just focused on your happy place, you know. And I'm glad to be back in my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> but I just had a few questions. Um, through your studies, was there anything that you found, I guess, on student workload? I think it, I mean, what goes back to that stress and pressure, pressure mm -hmm. subcommittee. And, you know, what they had talked about is just providing that parent education on the stress that our kids are under and how to balance. And that, and that really is, was discussion. And that kind of came out through the recommendation and just educating parents more on how they can better support their children at home with all the things that the kids have on their plate. Um, so that, that, was the, that was the discussion around that, around that topic. And anything on outside time? Over these last couple of months, students have spent countless hours inside, so I'm pretty sure you know, it has to be detrimental to their mental health. I know at the beginning of this and continue, me and my family try to take walks because mm -hmm. we're spending every day inside. So anything, I guess, yeah. on outside time? Yeah, I don't know if you want. Well, it, it's kind of interesting how the perspective on social media shifted mm. when, you know, COVID hit. You know, there was one perspective going into the task force and then how it became important to even have that so that people were still able to um, communicate and feel as though they were part of a community. Um, 
I wasn't really familiar with Zoom, but I certainly am now. And it's one of the ways the only you, that we really have to be together until we little by little open up and um, you know are able to be in person. So yeah, just having, again, giving students the skills. Um, res you know, we certainly, after that um, panel that we had uh, last week on the Let's Talk Justice, it was so interesting. Um, you know the concerns that the students have and just how um, how they tackle those but giving the students the support that they need and helping them with the tools to be able to cope with the new challenges that they're faced with and that's one of the things that struck us when we were writing this report is that the environment changes and just how resilient our community is and I think um, Dr. Lindsay said it best when she said, this is bringing out the best in people, and it really is, and it's bringing out the best in our students, and we're, we're all learning together, you know? It's, it's just one of those things that, you know, we're working through and, and we'll get through, but it's, um, it's been a very interesting process. Well, I just want to echo my colleagues and want to thank you, Ms. Meichler, Mr. Pittman, and Mr. Vogelin. And I did want to say, too, one specific idea that came out of it in regard to the outdoors, you know, spending more time outdoors. This is pre-COVID, but um, Arlington Echo and our Outdoor Education Center had started doing some work around outdoor spaces at schools, and they'd already created eight spaces at middle schools that are around self-care, mental well-being. So that was a recommendation that came prior to, um, to the shutdown to expand those to other schools where kids would have, have the opportunity to get outside, but when they get outside, engage in some activities that supported their mental well-being. Great. I'd, I'd just like to say one more thing. I mean, when, when I think of the start of this task force, and when I said there's almost 90 people in this room, one thing that really struck me that is hard to, I guess, come alive in paper was the energy in this room. Mm -hmm. The number of professionals and just the advocates and family members and the students who are in this room people from all over our community were here ready to roll up their sleeves and share ideas and it's just so exciting and but that energy continued right down to the end right down to the, the last zoom and the jamboard activity i mean it was really an intense process and it was just very exciting and very heartwarming to just know that everybody in this community cares so much about our children mm -hmm. And also just to uh, echo what Ms. Hummer said, like just understanding that we are a big county with a lot of agencies, but we are, we have small connections and, and just to see how the collaboration was and the connections between agencies was just really nice to get everyone in that room. And I see, um, I see us building on that and just making those connections better and then transitioning to just provide the supports wherever the environment takes us. But, but the, that, that um, those connections are strong and they're there. Thank you all so very much. I have just one question, and that is, I know so often when we form task force and work groups, the what happens next? Mm -hmm. And I know everybody always thinks of the immediate. Um, I'm wondering if it would be advantageous if next summer or similar, since summer seems to be a good time to pull stuff together, is if the task force is willing to maybe come back together and maybe do a brief assessment or something. Um, sure. I think that would be beneficial. Um, and I think it'll help, it helps keep things relevant and live. Too often we have um, in our offices, you know, binders and such, and we start to implement and perhaps lose that connectivity that was so important with all those people together. And I just think that, that may, there may be some opportunities there. And so, um, personally, not me as a board, um, would like to you know, see a consideration for that. I, I think that might be helpful for all of us. If you do an annual progress report, I will be here each year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and it would be interesting also to see how it aligns with the other task force and the work that's being done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there are, are uh, transcending the scope of the, the task force members. I know are taking hard looks at this from a variety of different angles and ways. I think it may be the, the mm. other mics there. But um, thank you guys so very
very much. Can I ask um, another, another point? To, um, um, sure, we can, we can get, we, get uh, we have time for one more. Um, first of all, I feel like I, I had to um, chime in a little bit because I did have the opportunity to, um, the privilege to serve on the stress and pressure um, subcommittee. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, outdoors, sleep, those things were absolutely topics of conversation. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, um, when we had our last Zoom meeting with the Jam Board and our subcommittee was asked to list priorities, um, the one I saw up here tonight on the screen was the idea of it, but it did have more detail and it even included the word sleep and I think outdoor or exercise or something. It had a few different things um, to educate parents and staff on. Mm -hmm. So um, these are definitely um, really important mm -hmm. things, but the other piece is, again, every, every subcommittee had several recommendations. Yes. And of course, you had, to, you had to get priorities because we can't focus on mm -hmm. 50 things at once. But certainly, um, it doesn't mean those other recommendations aren't important. Absolutely. And so absolutely, this work does need to be ongoing. And um, uh, periodic check-ins will keep us all on task. So uh, thank you. you <laughs> I had the same idea. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much for everything. We appreciate it. We knew that was coming, and we're, we're ready to be held accountable, and yeah. we want to be, so <laughs> thank you. Well, the thing is, now that we have, we've got some action items, so now it's time to roll up the sleeves, literally, and I know that uh, the county will be under, under Mr. Pittman's leadership, as well as under Dr. Alato's leadership. We've got a lot of work to do. And it's good to know that we've got an excellent start and a foundation, thanks to all of you. Thank you guys so much once again. It is so greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Arlotta, did you have any closing remarks? Same question. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all once again. Greatly appreciated. Oh, and it's Mental Health Awareness Week. I don't know if you planned it that way. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. Good timing. <laughs> Well, that was an excellent presentation indeed. I'm looking forward to digging into that report a lot more further as I know my members are, uh, fellow members. Um, next item uh, section is five, our departmental reports. Item 5.01 is the safety and security report. And joining us this evening is Ms. Jackson. Ms. Jackson. one of the many ways that we keep ourselves safe is being mindful of um, the protocols um, and so as we integrate we will have a couple minutes um, in between things good evening Pre president Corkadel, vice president Ellis members of the board and dr. Arlotto for the record, I am Monique Jackson, Deputy Superintendent for Student and School Support. I am providing a monthly update on security as requested. The Office of Schools Security Team continues to work with law enforcement and fire investigators to assist with investigations involving AACPS properties, staff, and students. The State of Maryland, through the Maryland Center for School Safety, has released guidance regarding legally mandated emergency drills, such as lockdown, evacuation, reverse evacuation, weather, et cetera, for the 2020-2021 academic year. AACPS, through the Office of School Security, will provide information to building administrators and staff that accommodate these drills while minimizing the possibility for contamination to students and staff. The Anne Arundel County Fire Marshal has provided guidance regarding the legally mandated fire drills for the 2020-2021 academic year. Fire drills continue to be legally required, and this will present unique challenges when teachers are presenting in-person and virtual instruction with AACPS within the AACPS locations. The Office of School Security will continue to work with building leaders regarding promising practices for fire drills and emergencies during COVID conditions. That said, actual alarms have sounded 
in our buildings during the pandemic. Natural and man-made emergencies continue to occur. During real-world emergencies, evasions from a life-threatening condition may require short-term and temporary periods where distancing cannot and should not be maintained. Thank you. This concludes the update, and I'm available to answer questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. You can't see me smile, but I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> smile with your eyes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, is there, I see your light on, uh, Ms. Antoine. Um, I'm, I'm going to call on you unless, or you too, Ms. Hummer? Okay. I don't, maybe I'll go real roll call order if you don't have anything then um so uh mr grannon anything nope. um and oh no miss shawheim um no thank you so much for your presentation as always much appreciated thank you miss shawheim miss antoine hmm? we're okay. we're going in roll call order at this Got point it. all right um uh, thank you, Vice Vice President Ellis. Uh, Ms. Jackson, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I came prepared to ask a different type of safety mm -hmm. question today. Yes, ma'am. But the fire drills raised my curiosity. Mm -hmm. The drills I am accustomed to means congregating and accounting for those that are congregating. In COVID, mm -hmm. how we doing that differently um so we haven't actually conducted the drills yet we're still oh, okay. working with our okay. maryland center for school safety um they have released guidance recently and so we'll continue to work through that and um, afford um, our principals the opportunity to weigh in as we're um, conducting the checklist for drills um, but what we know is, as I mentioned there at the bottom, during a real world emergency, so you know you have your drill and then you have a real world emergency. And we've had them since the pandemic began. Um, for example, a smell of gas, right? Um, and so whoever is in that building is going to have to evacuate. And as we're bringing in smaller groups of students, um, that's gonna be a little bit easier than a school of 2,100 students. And so this will give us the opportunity to really take a look at our, our safety plans um, and ensure that not only are they in alignment with um, state and local requirements, but they meet the needs of our schools and locations. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. I also wanted to share a personal thank you. This evening, I was escorted in by our security team, and I had, I felt very confident in our movement uh, forward and what you all are doing. So thank you for that and for being here um, and for leading that, that charge. Um, that will be all I have, Vice President Ellis. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Thank you, um, Ms. Antwine, for that. And if I may, I would also like to piggyback on that thank you. Um, everyone in our school system has been working extremely hard. Um, our school security team works behind the scenes to make sure that little things um, don't become big things. And so we really appreciate all that they're doing, even as we're speaking. Um, they have not stopped. It's hard. It, they cannot work virtually. And so um, they've really been doing a wonderful job. And I thank Mr. Batten and his entire team for the grace and patience that they have shown throughout the entire pandemic. Thank you. Mr. Lai. No. Ms. Hummer. So it's, we still are required um, through the fire marshal's office, yes ma'am, to have fire drills. We are a public building, yes ma'am. Well, but, but if they're not in the building, they're, I mean, I'm asking. No, so it would be the, the people that are in, in the building, but as you know, many of our teachers have decided to right. work in their classrooms, and this has happened. You know, we had a, a, a gas smell and we had to evacuate, and um, so, that you know, yes ma'am. I really thought they were requiring that teachers teaching from home. No ma'am, but. A, a fire drill, I was like, no, but we do encourage parents to, um, you know, practice those drills at home um, just, just because our students are at home a lot more. And so we need to make sure that they uh, know, for example, the meetup places and things of that nature. So we do encourage that. It's not that teachers have to 
have to ring a bell. No, ma'am. Okay. Oh, please, no. No. No, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Smith, anything? Well, just to follow up to Ms. Um, Hummer's question, is the same thing true for, I guess, hurricane drills or active shooter drills? So that's what the Maryland Center of School Safety, we're working with them. Which of, of those um, drills are going to be mandatory? Um, given the situation that we're in. So um, that's yet to be determined. And once we have that finalized information, I would be happy to share that with the board. That sounds good. Well, as always, thank you for thank the you. phenomenal work you do. Thank you, sir, for your tremendous support. I appreciate it. Thank you. And now for our bullying and prevention report. Thank you. Good evening again, President Corkadell, Vice President Ellis, members of the board, and Dr. Arlotto. For the record, I am Monique Jackson, Deputy Superintendent for Student and School Support. I am providing the update on bullying prevention as requested. At this time, all schools are submitting the appropriate bullying forms as a result of the training held for administrators this summer. They are doing a wonderful job. Thank you to all of our school-based administrators. As of September 30th, we have received 11 bullying reports and three bias-motivated behavior forms. At its next meeting, the bullying work group will have two areas of focus, supporting Unity Day, which Dr. Gillens will speak about, and additional utilization of student voice in appropriate venues, as Mr. Smith has so eloquently discussed earlier in the meeting. Thank you. This concludes the update, and I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Ms. Antoine. Uh, thank you, and thank you. I'm looking forward to the report and a few from uh, Dr. Gillens. Thank you for yes, that, about Unity Day. My question would be, as, um, as we look to possibly bring students back in, some of these report numbers may change, and one of them, when I was growing up, it was cooties, right? Yes, ma'am. And, and that was a big issue. When you're young, somebody even saying that you know you're close to them was a problem. So now we have a more valid concern with with COVID. Have we considered the bullying aspect concerning COVID and, and bullying of students? Yes, ma'am. Um, and so uh, as we continue to focus on that, we want to be sure that we. Um, direct parents and, and, and our communities and making sure that they understand bullying and then the difference between bullying and teasing, name calling, those things like that. And so we want to prevent all instances of any types of bullying, teasing, harassment or anything like that. Um, we are working through our second step, which um, as the mother of a um, third grader and fifth grader, I completely understand what you're saying. Um, and so, um, I listen to lessons that the amazing teachers have been um, presenting, um, especially when it comes to the community building, second step, things of that nature, and they're doing an excellent job of building community. And that's what we want. We want students to build community, and when you know someone and you are um, connected to that person, you are less likely to try to intentionally do harm to that person. And so that's what the transition is going to be. And that's what we've been working on as a school system, the building of community and the building of relationships. And so we absolutely know that this, the numbers will spike once they're together again, um, because there are more opportunity for that. Um, but we will continue to work through that um, and continue to build that sense of community. And hopefully the spike will not be as large. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Antoine. Uh, Ms. Shalhan? Ms. Antoine went first because she touched on some of the, the items I was going to touch on, and that is um, Unity Day, which is already being discussed. Um, in my daughter's class. And second step, which I've already been very impressed with um, in the, the fourth grade world. Um, so I wanted to say thank you um, for, for those efforts uh, 
occurring in full force online. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's so, so important that we, we, uh, we get to them while they're really young. So we avoid problems in middle and high school. And, uh, and, and, and I, I see evidence of that in her classes. Um, so thank you for that. Much appreciated. Thank you, Ms. Shellheim. Thank you, Ms. Shellheim. Um, I'm not sure in, in necessarily of uh, order. Do we have, um, Mr. Grannon, did you have any comments? Uh, no further comments at this time, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any other members? Um, seeing none. Thank you so very much, Ms. Jackson. Thank you all, and stay safe. Dr. Gillis. Good evening, President Corcadell, Vice President Ellis, Dr. Arlato, and members of the board. For the record, I am Maisha Gillens, Executive Director of Equity and Accelerated Student Achievement. I'm providing the monthly update on diversity and inclusion. My report tonight will focus solely on Project Unity. On October 24th, 2018, schools and offices across our county came together to celebrate Unity Day 2018, an initiative of the National Bullying Prevention Center designed to visibly show commitments to fostering kindness, acceptance, and inclusion, and to eliminate hate and bullying. As part of that event, the National Bullying Prevention Center encouraged participants to wear orange as a clear indication of their commitment against bullying. Our work to impart to children the values of kindness, acceptance, and inclusion continues every day. I'm excited to tell you that we are expanding our efforts of Project Unity to include teaching tolerances social justice standards. The social justice standards are a roadmap for anti-bias education at every grade level. The standards provide a common language and organizational structure for what anti-bias attitudes and behaviors look like and sound like in the classroom. A diverse group of central office and school-based staff have been working hard to create meaningful lessons to deliver on the four early dismissal days. Two weeks from today, on October 21st, we will focus on the social justice standard identity. An example of a lesson would include students expressing pride, confidence, and healthy self-esteem without denying the value and dignity of other people. On December 9th, we will focus on the social justice standard, diversity. An example of a lesson would include students responding to diversity by building empathy, respect, understanding, and connection. On February 10th, we will focus on the social justice standard, justice. An example of a lesson would include students analyzing the harmful impact of bias and injustice on the world, historically and today. On April 21st, we will focus on the social justice standard, action. An example of a lesson would include students recognizing their own responsibility to stand up to exclusion, prejudice, and injustice. It is our hope that the ongoing dialogue around the social justice standards on these four days and throughout the year will continue to help us create spaces for all students that promote kindness, acceptance, and inclusion to ensure more, to ensure 
more just, equitable, and safe schools. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gillens. I uh, decided, because uh, we only meet once every couple of weeks, so I've got my orange on today, my orange <laughs> skirt to kick off unity, because I know you guys, this is the month. Yes, thank and you. And I'm excited about it, because with each passing year, we're now building and building on information. Mm -hmm. And as our kids go from grade to grade, mm -hmm. we're establishing the coping skills and the fortitude. So thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to hearing all the great news that comes out of not just this day, but every sure. single day that you continue to report. Uh, we're going to take a round call, uh, roll call order if anyone has any comments or questions. Ms. Ellis? No, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Mr. Grannon? This time, thank you, President Cusel. Thank you. Um, Ms. Shawhan? I just want to say thank you, as always, for your presentations. Um, you know I look forward to them, and I'm very grateful for the information all of you make. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shawhan. Ms. Antoine? Anything? Thank you, President Corkadel. Um, I had a motion, as well as <coughs> a comment. Um, so, so I guess I'll do the comment first for the motion, if you, if you don't mind coming back to me. Uh, yeah, I was not aware that there was a motion pending, but um, members do have the opportunity, if provided it's germane to the uh, report information. Good to go. In the interim, I, my uh, question um, will concern the SATs that are coming up. I really wanted to thank Dr. Alato and his staff, you all, for the diversity and in, in inclusion efforts that have gone to make this happen on the 14th. There are many students that will greatly benefit from this effort and you all, I cannot tell you how important um, this, this, this will be for so many. But I, I strongly appreciate the consideration for the students. I would, um, I've shared this with Dr. Alato and I'll share it publicly. I would request that everyone involved in this please go above and beyond to ensure that those students have that, that opportunity, as you have done and continue to do. Um, but simple things like I didn't print off my receipt of sign up can, can keep a student from taking that test on that day. So thank you very much for that and the, the considerations for that. That's all for now. Okay, did, did, did you have a motion to make, Ms. Antoine? I do. Okay. But okay. I thought we were doing round robin, so I'm really concerned. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. I didn't know if um, we have, uh, you, you're correct, um, that, that, that's fine. Um, Mr. Gilland? Thank you, Madam President, and Dr. Gilland, it's good to see you. Uh, no questions or comments today. Thank you, good to see you. Mr. Lott? No yep. questions or comments, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Ms. Hunter? No questions or comments, thank you. Mr. Smith? Well, it's nice to see you again, Dr. Gillins, this time in person. Um, just a few questions. The first one is, I know this wasn't in your report, but what activities, do you know of any activities that occurred during Hispanic Heritage Month? Mm -hmm. That actually, that memo was sent to the school board. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we have to make sure that you get a hold of that. <laughs> okay. You know, I, my inbox has like a thousand emails right now. I understand. I understand. So we'll make sure we get that too. Go there was a time. different between art, music. There were so many different things that were compiled to be able to provide you a response to the question that was asked of me the last board meeting. So we'll make sure we, you get that. Okay, great, great. Mm -hmm. I, I really wish the email, you know, they had like a priority button, you know, like you, knew, you can well, pay for your contacts. Well, once you get that master, you let me know. <laughs> and then uh, my next question is, oh, these lessons about the social justice topics, um, will there be modifications made uh, in classes with, a, I guess, a small minority population? Like, I go to Mead High School, mm. so all my students really look like me, so I don't really have a uh, problem sharing about my blackness because mm. they can already connect. Right, but let's say we go to a school, you know, with a majority white population, mm -hmm. you might have a few minority students and maybe even lesser of a few mi religious minority students. Right. Um, I think they would have a hard time sharing just because 
Certainly. You don't know how um, your students are gonna, your, your classmates are gonna react to what you're sharing. So Certainly. do you know if any modifications have been made in Certainly. those situations? And I think, it, I mean, this is a, your comp, what you're asking me is very loaded. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to <laughs> shrink it. The short answer is, Definitely, yes, but it's how you define, right? Are we gonna use, uh, we're gonna put students a spotlight on, you're the only? Of course not, that's not how we do business. But identity goes beyond just race, as we know, right? It's sexual orientation, sexual um, identity. It can go um, from gender, it can go from um, socio socioeconomic status. So a student can decide what part of, the, of their identity do they wanna share. Right, so it's definitely um, very student-centered as to what they're comfortable sharing. And there may be aspects of their identity that they're not comfortable sharing. So the lessons, and they're also great appropriate as well. So when we talk about identity, it sounds very different from a senior to a kindergartner, right? Their identity could be, I love my doll baby. You know, I identify with, you know, my Barbie doll or whatever. Favorite color. Correct, favorite color, right? So definitely, I, I understand the question, but I do think there's a larger conversation as to even how do we define identity? It isn't just specific to race. There are so many dimensions to, that make us who we are. And so students will be um, self-selecting as to what they wanna highlight, what they wanna talk about. And we have to celebrate it. So really, how are we creating an environment in which I can show up to be authentically me? And it's accepted and it's understood and it's not teased, and it's not bullied, and it's not shamed. So that's what, hopefully I've answered your question about what that will look like. Yeah, so you really you know, took it and ran with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that was great, that's what, that's what I wanted. I'm glad that these conversations are really happening. But as always, thank you, Dr. Gillens. And we're looking forward to you. Mr. Smith is being very modest, but he's kicking us off um, with helping to video record kicking off Unity Day. So we're really excited. With the cats out the bag. We're the, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> cut the tape, cut the tape. <laughs> cut the tape, right, exactly. Well, there you go. See, there you go asking me a whole bunch of side questions. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Um, I, I believe we're done um, with questions and comments, and so. <laughs> Um, I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Antoine. Ms. Antoine? I'm done. Thank you, President Corcadell. This has something to do with Unity Day. Um, I understand that it's the 21st. And last year, it was a board day, a board meeting day as well, and we all wore orange. So I move that we wear orange on October 21st in consideration and solidarity with Unity Day. Second. We have a motion and a second, and I would normally to say to incline to gain consensus, but I think our members would want to go on record on this one and maybe make a comment or two. So if we could just take a minute, I know we were very limited in time tonight, but um, to see if there's any. Um, it, so, Ellis, anything? Uh, no. Okay. No, I'm I'm happy to wear orange. Okay. <laughs> Very happy. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Mr. Brannon, um, any comments on the motion? Appears none. Michelle Hine. I'm sorry, did that motion come through with you, but I did not hear it? Absolutely. Miss Antoine, if, if you may. Uh, thank you. May I actually then? since I'm repeating it, amend it? Because I make this, I've made this motion almost every year. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I'll accept the uh, exception to the rule, to the parliamentary rule. Oh, thank you. Um, so while, while it's there, I want to rephrase the motion. Uh, and uh, I move that we were orange on Unity Day whenever sure. Unity Day and our board meetings coincide. Second. Okay, um, as edited, thank you very much. And um, Michelle Hunt, did you have any comments? Um, only to say that I agree, thank you. Okay. Um, 
And Ms. Antoine is the author. Any, any follow-up, Mr. Gillen? Mr. Love, no. Seeing none, Mr. Any? Seeing none, Mr. Smith? Oh, and can we get, I guess, a, a friendly reminder when these days occur? I know when I'm in school, mm -hmm. they'll tell us, but I know for the board members, you know, you don't want to be the one wearing blue on Unity Day. I just got so, several nods um, from our, our team in the, uh, in the background here that they are happy to do the reminders and uh, get us all geared up and energized. In my opinion. Absolutely. Okay, um, I have no comments, so... Um, Ms. Antoine, if you would like to close out, is there any further comments? President uh, Corcoran, I have nothing further. Thank you all in, uh, for this. Ms. Howe, please call roll. I've just added to all of your calendars. <laughs> Wear orange on the 21st. <laughs> Ms. Ellis? Aye. Mr. Granin? Ms. Schalheim? Ms. Antwine? Aye. Mr. Gilliland? Aye. Mr. Lyde? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Corkada? Aye. Motion passes 8 0. Thank you very much, Ms. Antwine. That is, a, that is a motion I'll take on the fly any day. <laughs> okay. Um, next is our um, item. 5.04, the transportation report. Good evening, Mr. Chuck Good evening. For the uh, record, Alex Shacknovitz, Chief Operating Officer, here bringing uh, you to transportation report this evening. Uh, the transportation department has been uh, busily engaged in working with the working with and supporting the 14 reopening committees that uh, Dr. Mann, McMahon has been leading throughout the district. Uh, and not only working with those committees, but taking input from our 23 sister jurisdictions, sharing it with our committees, and taking the information from our committees and sharing it with our 23 sister organizations. Uh, a lot of time and effort has been put into that. You saw some of those results Monday when we saw, for example, uh, some of Dr. Lotto's uh, graphics and comments as it related to transportation. Um, but we are now happy to begin participating in actually transporting students. We have been, as you know, uh, transporting students already to the developmental centers uh, and uh, Cat North. We're preparing to begin transport of students to uh, Cat South as well as uh, four to six uh, middle schools for ELL students. Uh, but what I want to focus on tonight specifically is the uh, SAT administration that Ms. Antoine alluded to a little bit earlier. Uh, we find that very exciting for a purpose. Uh, we have been operating on the assumption that we are going to have youngsters uh, opting into transportation this year. So providing families the informed, uh, to make an informed choice to opt into transportation. So if you're a walker, you still remain a walker if you're within the board's regulation. But if you're a transport eligible child, uh, you're uh, eligible for transportation, but a uh, family may not elect to avail themselves of that. We need to know that information so that we can then uh, properly schedule and route those youngsters. Working uh, transportation work collaboratively with Instructional Data Division and um, the Department of Technology to create a mechanism to gather information as part of the SAT registration process and then the data from the uh, uh, family and student selection in opting into the SAT process also involved the family opting into transportation services. We created a file transfer protocol by which the information that Instructional Data Division collected was then uh, electronically conveyed over to our transportation department. And the transportation department then was able to utilize that data as input data into a scheduling and routing algorithm uh, that we are working on to provide uh, transportation to support uh, the October 14th day. And so why are we excited to do that? Because you want to get good at things at the small scale and then be able to ramp up. So we're hoping to continue with that model and that information and use the lessons learned in support of uh, the developmental centers, the CAT centers, and now the SAT days and the uh, ELL uh, learning centers to begin to uh, better position us on a technology basis uh, 
to support the ramp up uh, in a hybrid learning model uh, should that come to pass. And with that, I'll conclude my remarks and turn it back over to you, Madam President, and your colleagues for any questions. Thank you so very much. Um, lot to unpack in, in your in transportation universe, indeed. Um, we're going to go roll call order, of course. Ms. Ellis. Thank you. Um, that was fascinating, and it's very exciting to me to, to hear uh, to hear that you're doing that. Um, so where are you in the process? The registration has already occurred, and now you're creating the routes. Is right, we, ju we just got that data dump transferred over. Uh, the, the three departments uh, with transportation uh, and instructional data. The instructional data was the collector of information. Uh, transportation assisted us with the uh, transactional element, and transportation is the receiver of that element. The critical thing was really um, arriving at an agreement to the file uh, data transfer the way the file was structured, the uh, delimiters or the column structures, what goes in which column, how big the columns are, because the way that the information is uh, collected and compiled at IDD has to be uh, properly configured such that when it's transferred over to transportation, it comes over in a way that uh, the transportation system can use it without additional uh, manipulation. So. Uh, for example, and I'm going to make up a random example, you know, is the, is the file structure uh, for student identification? How many letters is, you know, how many characters are in that field? And if it's a nine character uh, letter or ID number, you know, how many leading zeros? Is it always going to be the, a four digit number for the student and five additional leading zeros, et cetera? If IDD structured that as eight, characters, but technology, I'm sorry, transportation was expecting it to be nine or vice versa, the data wouldn't transfer seamlessly. Right. And that would create a lot of rework and reconfiguration. It's really important and most efficient to, able to be able to do that thinking on the front side, not only to capture the data, but capture it correctly and accurately and in a manner that it can be effectively and efficiently transferred over to other users. Great. So and this so is an opportunity to to do some work up front to get ready for exactly. That's, that's awesome. why we were so excited about it, and that's why I selected that as a, as, for lack of a better word, a little bit of a highlight to speak about tonight because I think that will pay uh, us dividends uh, years going down the road. And clearly, as we begin this evolving reopening process, but even beyond that, we hope. Yes, a highlight indeed. Um, so uh, the we had, I believe, four transportation positions approved. Um, I believe last I heard we've hired one of them. Is that still uh, the current update? Correct. One, one was hired. Three were advertised. I do not know if the advertisement has closed yet, but I know one was one was hired and onboarded. Uh, Great. The three positions were advertised, but uh, as of right now, I don't know what the status of that okay. is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Ellis. Mr. Granin? Uh, nothing at this Thank you, sir. Michelle Hunt. Um, yes, thank you for that report. Um, where are they advertised? Because when I go to Greer's section of AACPS.org, and I've done this sort of off and on since I started this work position for release, I type in transportation, all I see are bus driver positions. So where exactly would I find those ads? It would be on the same website. They're not advertised elsewhere. Um, Oh, okay, so what, what keyword would I put in then to get those jobs to appear? I'll be happy to look that up and, and get back to you. I don't have access okay. to a HR website in front of me tonight. Okay, yeah, I, it would be, I would, you know, I, just, I was looking forward to seeing them. I, I just haven't seen any of them. Um, which of the four positions was uh, hired and onboarded of the four that were released? Uh, one was hired and onboarded, and that was the GIS administrator. Awesome, perfect. Um, and so the hearing, my hearing is a little off with this, so please bear with me, but what I, what I thought I heard and understood and was very excited about and nodding over here was that we we're going from a paradigm shift of, of opting out of transportation 
invitation to opting in. Is that an accurate statement? That has been the case for the SATs and for the uh, Centers of Applied Technology and for the um, Connectivity Remote Learning Center at Southern Middle School. Uh, I believe it's part of the work of the committees and the superintendent of the board to decide what the modality will be continued going forward. Okay, I'm confused. I, I thought we were gonna we're gonna assess how that works and then and then and then push it out more broadly when we're that, hybrid and then God willing eventually back in buildings full that, steam. That is the recommendation of the committee and that is where the the uh, reopening work has been leading us. That's wonderful. I think that's going to be fantastic, and I applaud you all for, for taking that, um, that step. So I think that's all I have for now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Rohan. Ms. Antoine, any comments or questions? I, I just, I think, I think that's incredible, incredible and brilliant. Um, that they will have a, a means and, and parents get, a, get an opportunity to um, say whether or not they want to, to participate. So thank you for that. Out of, for me, that's an out of the box kind of thought. Um, and it, I look forward to the metrics that come from that uh, next month. Yes, and we, we found those well received by parents for one other reason, and that is that the, um, the parent or the guardian was able to make that selection all at one time. Right. So instead of it being a, we email out about the SATs, you opt into the SATs, and then X days later, you get another, trans another email about communications, and you may miss one or see one, see not the other. Everything was blended together in a package, so uh, that was done purposely, so it was easier on the end user, and the feedback that we've gotten is that um, the, the parent and guardians have liked that uh, integrated all in one place kind of uh, shopping spot. Awesome, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Antoine. Mr. Gilliland, seeing none. Mr. Lett, uh, seeing none. Ms. Hummer, seeing none. Mr. Smith. Just about the SAT, um, when I signed up for the SAT, um, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was happy to see everything in the same place like you were talking about. And I was actually going to click. I need a ride because I remember, you know, I'm licensed up. So it's pretty good. Just, just remember to, to remember to put fuel in the car the night before the test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but just phenomenal job of the transportation aspect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I don't have any questions, but I do want to express sincere gratitude. Um, you know. I, I've had an opportunity to attend at some of the national school board levels, some of the seminars that engage at that bigger picture of what transportation is going, what's going on in transportation world. And, um, you know, uh, they went around and asked our tier levels. And, um, you know, uh, they said, well, three or more, you know, we're praying for you <laughs> as we get through COVID. And you guys have not made it seem that insurmountable. Although I know the work has been absolutely incredible, what we are and going to continue to see as we continue to integrate um, back into our schools, I believe, is um, an excellent product. And I know as, as you're getting the things up, this positions filled, that we will continue to uh, improve on our system and better it. So thank you guys so very much. Thank you. Um, I don't believe there's any more questions at this time. Um, so that concludes Section 5, the Departmental Reports. Next is Section 6, the Consent Items and Awards of Contracts. <laughs> item 6.01, Instructional Software, and Item 6.02, Staffing Services. Madam President, move to bundle. Second. We have a motion and second to bundle. Uh, do I have any one opposed? Seeing no opposition, um, the motion stands to bundle. Dr. Arlotto. Yes, Madam President, thank you so much. <clears throat> I recommend that the Board of Education authorize the award of the contracts as listed on today's agenda 6.01 and 6.02. So moved. 
Motion and second has been made. Are there any questions? I'm gonna start with our um, remote members because I'm not seeing any questions here on the dais. Ms. Schalheim, any questions? Not seeing any at this time, Mr. Grannon? No question, I thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, it appears we have no further questions. Ms. Howe, please call roll. Ms. Ellis? Aye. Mr. Grannon? Aye. Ms. Schalheim? Aye. Ms. Antwine? Aye. Mr. Gilliland? Aye. Mr. Live? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Corkado? Aye. Motion passes 9 0. Thank you very much. Um, I was uh, a little remiss um, earlier um, in that we have had a couple um, public comments on the agenda items. I apologize in the, with the task force and some of the unique happenings um, I neglected. Ms. Howe, could you please report on um, upcoming items as well as um, ones that have? Yes, yeah, so for the uh, 4.01 Mental Health Task Force report, we did receive one public comment which was posted to the website. And for the transportation report item 5.04, we also received one public comment which was posted to the website. Thank you very much. Um, next item uh, is item 7.01, which is reopening in the hybrid model. Um, it is my understanding that uh, we have, um, and we had our special session on Monday night, <clears throat> and it's my understanding that we have uh, two motions um, that I'm aware of. And those two motions, I believe, are both germane to the, act, to the um, agenda item, and they are also unique enough that we can deploy an option similar to what we do when we have more than one option for a decision, such as redistricting. And so um, I would like to propose that the two members making the motion do so um, in no particular, we'll just do it in roll call order, and present those as, I, as option one and option two. We will take commentary on both of them simultaneously since it's basically one thing, two choices, and um, we'll go round robin with those um, debate points. And then um, at the conclusion of that, um, we will then go to vote and each member will identify um, whether or not they choose to vote for option one, option two, or not at all, which is also always a choice to abstain or to say no um, to both. So with that in mind, um, Ms. Ellis and Ms. Hummer were the two um, motion requesters. And so at this time, I will ask them each to clearly state their motions. The board members have had advance notification of both of these. Um, so um, members should be able to pull it up as well as our secretary um, for reiteration. Ms. Ellis, please. Thank you. Um, I, I do have a statement to make to, um, so I, I don't know if I can do that before I. I think that's acceptable. We, we usually accept brief statements prior to the motion so that people understand uh, the nature of it. Okay. So yes, and, and then the rest would be in debate, of course. Um, first, I really wanna thank the community, namely parents and teachers for providing valuable feedback to the plan to enter into hybrid learning for our elementary students that was pre presented to us Monday evening. And bear with me, I have to go through a little history because I, I, I think we all have to understand how we got here. Um, on July 8th, Dr. Arlato gave this board an update on our public meeting, uh, in our public meeting on summer learning and the results of the parent survey indicating what was wanted for our students for this fall. Over 78% of parents indicated in that survey that they wanted their students in school, 49% indicating full-time in person and 32% for a virtual plus, what we now are calling hybrid model. On July 22nd of this year, Dr. Arlato announced the decision to begin the school year in a virtual environment for the health and safety of our families and staff. 
that would remain in effect for the entirety of the semester, but that we would begin to bring students in in a virtual environment as soon as we safely could. He said he and his staff and committees would first get the virtual classroom up and running for a re robust learning experience for our students and then turn their attention to developing plans for hybrid learning. He indicated the students that would be highest priority, beginning with students in special centers, career and technology students, ESOL students, and then our youngest students. On September 14th, this board had a special session to receive an update and ask questions of the superintendent and our county health officer on plans to reopen schools. The communication on this plan has been consistent over a period going on three months now. This board has asked questions of our superintendent and Dr. Kaliana Raman in these meetings to find out when we could begin to phase our students back into the classroom. Dr. Arlato has always led with the safety of students and staff at the forefront and did not recommend bringing students back before our health officer indicated it was safe. Dr. K has remained careful and cautious and indicated this Monday, two days ago, that we can now safely begin the process of hybrid learning. That evening, Dr. Arlato presented a timeline with an overview of how this process will begin. Concerns were raised by teachers and parents about the classroom experience for our youngest learners under the new model. Dr. Arlato and his team developed the model according to guidance from Dr. Kalyana Rama, Raman, um, his guidance on any safety concerns. As information is always changing and being updated throughout this pandemic, Dr. K indicated at Monday's meeting that elementary students should not be required to sit at desk throughout the class, or through, I'm sorry, I'm lost. Um, let me repeat that. Elementary students should not be required to sit at desks throughout the day and with some modifications should indeed enjoy a more normal and developmentally appropriate classroom experience, which includes play, movement, and toys in the classroom. That addressed the biggest concern I heard from elementary teachers and parents. I also know that parents and teachers are concerned about disrupting established relationships. While there are no perfect solutions, I believe we can alleviate many of these concerns too, and I have some ideas I can share. We are no longer in a place where we must keep our schools closed. While we are not yet in a place to bring most high school and middle school students for classroom instruction, we now know we're able to begin bringing them in for extracurriculars for some much needed in-person interaction. So while it feels like we are rushing into a plan, we are not. One thing we have already learned is that we must continue to adjust, but we must keep moving forward. Again, this, this, we are three months into the planning of, this, of where we are now. I believe my continuous questions Monday dem and Tuesday demonstrate that I would not approve of a plan that is not in the best interest of our students or that is developmentally inappropriate. Parents asked and continue to ask to allow their students to go back to school, many who are struggling to learn in the virtual environment. Every parent can and should have the choice. And again, as we get into discussion, I have some, some ideas to share, but um, I'm, uh, with that being said, I'm gonna introduce this motion. In light of the information we have received this week, including Dr. Kalyana Raman's guidance, input from the public, and Dr. Arlato's advice about phased hybrid and parent choice in implementation, I move that the board accept the superintendent's recommendation to moving forward slowly and incrementally as he has outlined, recognizing that the board will expect the superintendent to continue to improve the plan with consideration to concerns expressed by parents and classroom teachers 
and will expect to receive regular reports on progress and any new developments at each of our future meetings and that we would reserve the right to request or approve adjustments to the reopening plans as circumstances in the schools may warrant. Second. Thank you, Ms. Ellis. Ms. Hummer. Yes, um, we are in an unprecedented time in education and our world. And during this time, there is no ideal solution to serving all of our students. Our teachers and staff have been working tirelessly for months to implement virtual learning in a way that provides challenging and enriching academic and social emotional support. And the current outcomes have been amazing. I've seen it firsthand with my own children and I've heard it from hundreds of parents. Our teachers and principals and custodians and secretaries and food service workers and TAs have been and continue to be incredible in what they have created and are providing every day. That being said, we also know that everyone would prefer to be meeting in person in the school building. However, current health and safety conditions in our county, country simply don't allow us to return to normal settings with all the benefits that that setting provides. For most of our children, virtual learning is offering a robust and safe alternative at this time. But there are students who are not thriving under virtual or having needs to that, that are not being adequately met. And these children, we need to provide additional or alternative supports. This board asked Dr. Alwadi to develop a timeline to return to buildings in a hybrid manner. I completely supported that timeline and that development. However, when presented with the plan, it became clear to me that as Dr. Alwadi said, moving to a full hybrid plan would be messy and difficult. His staff very clearly presented us the obstacles and challenges of moving to a hybrid model. It would create significant disruption for all of our families with a change in school hours and probable teacher changes. It would only allow two days of a week of in-person instruction, but in-person instruction that would be void of or very limited in the things that we desire in in-person instruction, touch, interaction, group play, movement, while increasing the work demands on our already spread thin teachers. I wish a return could be easier and more like normal school, but we are not there yet. Our families and our staff have had their lives disrupted in unimaginable ways, and many are grateful for the routines that have developed around the virtual learning platform. The hybrid model will interrupt those routines significantly without necessarily improving the educational experience for the majority of students. My priority is always to do what is best for children, period. I don't believe the hybrid model at this time is what is best for most children. I believe we should let the virtual platform continue as we originally stated throughout the first semester. At the same time, we cannot overlook the children whose needs are not being met virtually. We must continue to bring in our most challenged students, those with special needs, English language learners, our CAT students who require hands-on work in an even more aggressive way than ha we have been. For those children struggling with virtual learning, we need to provide extra supports for them and their families. I believe we will better serve all of our children by continuing virtually while focusing our extra efforts and attention on those most in need, rather than adding to the additional logistical hurdles and stresses of implementing a full hybrid model at this time. Therefore, I move that the board support the continuation of virtual learning for all students and the continued aggressive return of targeted groups such as CAT students, English language learners, and students with special needs to school buildings for direct instruction through the end of the first semester. Second. And before we go on, Dr. Arlotto, your recommendation when you presented to us on Monday um, was for the hybrid plan that you put forth, or that's what you presented to us. I would like to ask you what your recommendation for us moving forward would be at this time. I 
I'm just going to point out that normally you make a recommendation, and this is really a continuation. So I, I do not feel that you need to um, reiterate what you had spoken on Monday night. Um, and I'm not aware of any new protocols, but if you feel inclined to uh, reply, you may. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and thank you, uh, Mrs. Hummer, uh, for the question. Um, uh, I, I am, uh, I do want to give you my recommendation. Um, my recommendation at this time is that we remain in the virtual learning modality through the end of the first semester. There are a number of reasons for that, um, uh, not the least of which is the fact that we are now four weeks into, a, into the virtual learning. I believe for the most part, our students are beginning to settle into, start to get their sea legs, as it were. I think our families and parents and guardians are getting into a routine that works for their life circumstance, recognizing that there are so many different life circumstances that are being disrupted in this current environment, recognizing that, that we as educators want to be around our children. It's what we live for. We live for the social interaction. We live for the academic interaction. Um, it's what we want to do. But we are in a very, very difficult time. What was presented on Monday and what has been discussed with this board over months is the work that we've been doing over time to, imp to design and implement a way to start to bring students back into the school buildings. And that's important. And we believe that we can do that. We believe the model that we have built and that was presented and discussed at length on Monday um, is the best model possible at this time, but it does have a great deal, a great many limitations, and it is far from perfect. I do not believe there is a better hybrid model available to us at this time. I really don't. I think Dr. McMahon and her team and many in this county have put together hundreds of hours to put together a model that we believe that can work. So it will, saw, it will allow us to bring students in, but it'll be limited. It'll be two days a week. There'll be limited interaction between students and their classmates and students and their teachers. There'll be limited movement. We certainly do want to have movement um, in the classroom. We certainly do want to get students outside and moving, but it's going to be limited. And it was important for me on Monday, and I do appreciate the board allowing me some leeway to talk about the model on Monday so that everybody understands because in the end, if the board moves forward with the hybrid model, we're going to give parents a choice. And I want them to understand, everybody to understand, that it is going to be messy. And you have to know that in advance. And so for um, those reasons um, and others, I think, including, I think this community needs to settle into the virtual learning because I believe that, and as does Dr. Kalyana Rahman, and as we are seeing across the country, when we open schools, and we do want to open schools, we will have positive cases in schools, and we will close classrooms, and we may close schools. I hope we won't ever have to close the school system again. And I think by continuing to focus in the virtual environment, we can hone those skills for future use, while keeping our students and staff uh, as safe as possible. I think our virtual learning has gotten better. I think everybody's getting more used to it. But I also want to say in the same breath, we recognize well that itself is not perfect. We are in a very imperfect time in our world, certainly here in Anne Arundel County. And we want to we wanna try and make the most of it. So with that, um, I am of the belief that we should remain in the virtual learning modality through the end of the first semester and that we will continue to plan for the future, take input from the great many that have shared input over the last 48 hours. Um, we'll continue to learn more to see if we can 
tweak our hybrid model, though I don't know there's a lot that can be done with it, but we can work on that. But more importantly, we can, um, uh, we can focus on the students that are not being successful or won't be successful in the virtual environment and really focus on bringing them into the buildings in small groups in as safe a manner as possible. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Arlotto. Okay, so we have two motions, two different options. We're going to go in roll call order, uh, commentary, and I just want to remind um, that we have had a extensive detailed conversation as it relates to a lot of the items. And I would just hope in the interest of the benefit of those who are tuned in to us and also uh, just to be mindful, perhaps not to reiterate something that was obviously uh, well-defined on Monday night, <laughs> for lack of a better term, and as it relates to questions and otherwise. I obviously have no intent of limiting anyone's free right to, to have a say, but I just want to uh, point out that um, we do want to be timely and make sure that every, every member has a fair opportunity to speak on these two options, and then we'll get to a timely decision, um, obviously through vote. So Ms. Uh, uh, Ms. Ellis, you are one of the co-motion makers with Ms. Hummer. The two of you will go last in reverse order of uh, what you introduced in. And so that places us starting with Mr. Granin. Mr. Granin? Uh, yes, President Corcado, I move to call the question. Okay, that is non-debatable, and we immediately take a vote, provided there is a second. Do I have a second for the motion? That is correct, ma'am. Okay, motion has been seconded. Ms. Howell, please call roll. Ms. Ellis? I do believe in, in giving people a, a chance, an opportunity, so I'm gonna have to say nay. Mr. Brennan? Aye. Ms. Shawheim? Nay, I have some short and sweet dissent. Ms. Antwine? Nay. Mr. Gilliland? No. Mr. Lyde? No. Ms. Hummer? No. Mr. Smith? No. Ms. Corkadel? Nay. 1-8, motion fails. Uh, we are back to you, Mr. Granin, um, if you would like to comment on the debate that we are now resuming. No comments at this time. Thank you very much, sir. Next is um, Ms. Shalheim. Ms. Shalheim. Yes, I wanted to say that I appreciate um, both of these uh, motions. And I just, I, I wanna be clear on something for, for the whole public to, to witness for my colleagues as well. I am desperate to give our kids choice. Desperate to give our kids choice. I don't presume what's going on in other people's households and what their circumstances are and what their kids are facing on the daily. I, I'm not trying to do that. However, 48 hours of input, especially to our most precious stakeholders, our students and our families, is not enough. And relationships are everything. Um, We've had, we've, we've been inundated with emails. I doubt y'all are caught up. I'm not caught up. I think at last count, I had 1,100 more emails to read. And this is, this is me desperately trying to stay on top of it the last two days and parent and homeschool and you know what I'm saying? So I really want to give everyone's voice a chance. I need to be reading those. And two days is not enough time. Um, ripping students, there's a few things that really bother me about the plan. And the first one is ripping students not just away potentially from their teachers, but their aides, their art, music, band, media, PE teachers, as well as their school counselor, principal, and AP, all of whom they've become um, accustomed to, they've established trust with, in the middle of a semester, to me wasn't um, okay. Um, our kids have already been traumatized by the situation, all of them, and I will not add another ace 
by severing relationships with what is familiar uh, in our students' home school community. Um, we pride ourselves on relationships, um, but I, I won't have a plan that potentially shafts the relationships for students who for whatever reason choose to stay home for the year. And so I hope that this extra time gives us a, an opportunity to find a way to at least keep those kids, all of them in their home school, where they at least have some touch points with people that they trust and that they know. And so it isn't so jarring. Um, that doesn't mean, um, just because they stay home doesn't mean they don't love their teacher, their school, um, their, their other staff. Um, and so we just had a, this presentation on mental health and so I know that that means something to all of us. And this was to the relationships are so important. We say that all the time. Um, and I just don't want to put trauma on, on top of trauma. I also don't want to reopen our, our elementary schools, at least 12 of which are, maybe it's 14, um, as you all know, have extraordinarily late starting times, which again is another stressor on top of an already stressful situation. Those students will likely will be more walkers, um, and so those students will be walking home um, in the dark, and I'm not okay with that. So maybe this extra time that we so desperately need, we can we can fine tune the plan. I appreciate Dr. Arlotto and his team so much. This is not a judgment on y'all. You know, you, this is a her, her to win effort, and I. Um, I believe in you all, and I, I trust that we will make this plan even better with this extra time. And so therefore, uh, my vote will be for Ms. Hummer's motion. And thank you for hearing me tonight. I hope that was short enough. Um, I had all kinds of other things to read, but in light of the time tonight, I'll, I'll just I'll leave it there and thank you. Thank you, Michelle Hahn. Ms. Antoine, any comments? Well, I did, but after hearing Dr. Alato, I guess I, I don't. Um, and I would say that we have to stay focused on educating all of our students, whatever that means. Not most, not some, not a few, but all of them. And so um, the plan that was presented is has been described again tonight as messy. And if it's messy, then um, that works, um, that works to hurt and damage our students and not support them. Um, I said Monday that, and I stand on, there are children who are not being successful at all in the virtual environment and they should not be categorized in certain um, categories because of their circumstances, but because of their educational um, shortcomings that should be looked at individually as the students. Even most recently, <laughs> I got several calls, emails, texts about I'd my credentials are not working to get onto the system. That becomes frustrating. And for the students, it's demotivating. So although um, this is certainly a safe means to continue virtually, we have to look at other means to make sure we're still educating. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Antoine. Mr. Gilliland? Thank you. Mr. Lodd? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Dr. Arlotto, I'm allowed to ask questions, or am I not? Thank you. Yes, sir. I specifically asked Monday night if you and your staff believed that the hybrid proposal that you put forward, while messy and difficult, would work and be successful, be, could work and could be successfully implemented. 
Has your answer changed since Monday? N no, sir. And I and I stated in my remarks when I was asked the question. I just wanted to make sure I was I was clear on that. Uh, Monday evening, if if you would have gotten the same question, of course, I, I couldn't foresee it being asked since you were presenting to us the hybrid option. Uh, Monday evening, if you would have been asked the question, what do you recommend, the hybrid option or the virtual option for the rest of the year? What would have been your answer Monday? The virtual option. Okay. Well, I feel like I would I have been left uh, quite uh, without anything to stand on right now. Uh, I am not the professional you are or your staff. But when something's put forward to a recommendation to the Board of Education that this is something we can implement, I would hope that I am getting not only what we have asked you to do, but the absolute most, how would I say this, accurate assessment of the success and what you think we should do. And so I, for one, am extremely disappointed personally and professionally in this development. Uh, I remember something Dr. Cal Parham used to say when I worked for her many, many years ago in the ancient times. And I believe it was, we go through a lot of things, the board then, I wasn't on the board, I was staff just like Alex and Maureen and Monique. And she would say, uh, don't react to the heat, look for the light. Don't react to the heat, look for the light. Well, when I look for the light about returning our students to school, I see the thousands of students who have IEPs and 504s that are helped in the classroom environment, both by their teacher and an aide. I see the underprivileged children that teachers need to lay their eyes on because they have not seen the children and their conditions since March. The students who do not have adult support at home and do not have the quiet virtual learning environment that so many parents have been able to create for their children. We could go on and on listing certain students who might need this return to school rather than be taught virtually. And that is why I thought, in my heart, that is why we offered, our school system offered a choice from three models for our parents and our students. And I just, as I was reminded by a citizen's email, and yes, we have gotten quite a few emails, but one really came and struck me pretty seriously. Uh, we're working for those kids that need to return to school. We're not working for those kids that have a nice virtual nest at home and they're doing well. And I do remember and I do think that any hybrid plan that is created is not for those fortunate children doing well virtually. It's about the needs of those children who are not doing well and who need to be in the classroom environment. This is what I thought and believed that the hybrid plan that you and your staff were so eloquent in presenting Monday night was offering. And despite being far from perfect and not exactly meeting the want of parents who to have a specific teacher or stay in a certain class. I came away believing that we must give the parents and students that choice to make. And even after the developments tonight, I still think that's the choice that we should be giving parents and students to make. So I will vote to move forward with the hybrid option. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ladd. Ms. Hummer, you were one of the motion makers. You'll go last, or um, I'm sorry, second to the last. Mr. Smith.
I want nothing in the world but to return back to the classroom. Just this meeting alone has really refreshed my experience on the board, so I am certain that returning back to the classroom will do the same for all our students. But I also want our students who are struggling the most to get the best education over me. Like Mr. Live said, I'm in a comfortable virtual nest. I can survive, but I know there's a number of students out there who cannot. I know that under Mrs. Hummer's plan, you're gonna put more, even more emphasis on them and try to get them back in a better fashion than the plan we have before us. But I just hope that the next time we take a vote at the end of the first semester, whether we want to start a hybrid model for the second semester, I really hope that we can find a way, virtual or not, to get live in-person testimony. Because right now, the number in my head is 1277. 1,277 emails sit before me unread. Not because I didn't want to read them. That's their game plan. It's just because I don't have the time to read them. With my schedule, I could not really internalize what parents, teachers, and even students have really sat down to really take the time and write and express. And that's unfair to them. It's unfair that just because, yes, they can send it, that's not a real voice. So I really hope that next time we can take this and we can really hear what our communities have to say. And while we wait until the second semester, to if, to, if, we, choose so, if we so choose, I hope that in the meantime, we can do a needs assessment to see who really needs to go back in the buildings. Yes, you can say it's hard, but that, that, that won't cut it. On some days, it's hard for me, but I'm still thriving. I hope that in the meantime, we can you know, take the test that will happen at the end of the second semester, Dr. Lau, do you know when the elementary school benchmarks are gonna happen? Benchmark exams? I don't, I don't have the dates. But, but they in will happen like usual. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we can take those scores and see you know, if a student went from a B to a D, that we put that student at the top of the priority list. So just a needs assessment in the meantime, and I'm gonna support Ms. Hummer's motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mm. I believe I'm next. I've been sleeping, uh, haven't been sleeping a lot. Um, in part because of this issue. But I absolutely have to consider not just the most recent emails, but the well over a thousand that we've been receiving since reopening has been on our agenda for multiple months. And although they may have trickled in and people may have taken it, had a little bit more time over the summer than we do now, quantitatively, and I'm not really sure what that sound is. Oh, it is my hair pushing up against the thing. Would you believe that? I'm like, what is it? And it's me all along. <laughs> we all have ways that we all definitely need to continue to adjust this stuff. As I was saying though, as I was saying, I have to take into account the emails I saw in August compared to the ones I've seen of recent. And the fact of the matter is, I do strongly believe that a high percentage of our emails are an orchestrated message to us and we received the message. But I take a look at my equity lens here and it says, does the policy program practice or decision or action worsen existing disparities or produce other unintended consequences? I think not continuing to move us into hybrid does because the, ch the people that we 
need, that need the most representation are the families who don't have time and the luxury of emailing us. They do not have the luxury of driving around the campus with signs because many of them are single parents working two jobs, having to deal with asynchronous learning. How on earth, by condemning these kids to continued perpetuation of asynchronous learning, particularly in the elementary years, how on earth is that equitable? I do not see the evidence that it is. We have children that don't meet the categories, that desperately do need those services. Dr. Mickler, the mobile crisis unit, could probably spend hours upon hours telling you stories that would make your hair stand on end of what these kids are up to. I used to work with some of the families dealing with substance use and I'd go into an auditorium and how many of them, no matter how many resources that we provide out in the community and that we could do virtually, cannot be replicated except for in their school community. And when crisis hits, uh, although we have done such an outstanding job that we're even, our, our model being nationally recognized, we would be completely remiss to not recognize that this need is great and cannot be replicated in the virtual environment. And then we get to our special needs kids who in any other year and starting this year virtually are integrated in their classes. Are we now targeting them even further? Because in order for them to be successful, in order for them to have a chance at a good career in life, they need that hands-on. And now they're going to be ripped out of that classroom without a choice, without their, the opportunity for maybe their classmates to say, I want to join you in that classroom. The reason that they're there integrated my understanding, at least in part, not in whole. Of course, we have so many different categories of children of special needs, but there's a significant amount group that I have to take into consideration that the integration with their classmates is just as important as the hands-on that they need. We can't do both and we cannot provide both. Based on the survey data, okay, emails are great, most people don't have time to do them. Even with several thousand, we are still talking in our school community with over 44,000 families, 45,000, something like that, right? We're talking about a percentage that is not compared to the percentages, does not compare, pales in comparison to the surveys that we received from our actual families. It's like we're throwing it out the door because a few more weeks went by. We have some tough challenges to make and to face, clearly. Messy or not, every industry, to be clear, is messy right now, okay? Whether they're delivering your food and your groceries and your prescriptions and your meds and going to the doctor, look, education may not be the person that shows up when you dial 911, but education and our educators, when our kids are there, are the people who dial 911 for those kids who cannot. We have too many kids who just don't have the home resources. And although we will manage through this, whether all virtual or not, I will support the decision of the board as I always have. I just think we're playing some semantics here on people's lives. We're providing choice. Why not provide the choice? Because you know what? If what you guys are saying are true, we're not going to have a very big number. And then we can turn around and reassess because the motion on the table is to reassess. We meet every two weeks. Why wouldn't that reassessment be in place? It is absolutely imperative that we take into account all, not the latest and greatest. The fact of the matter is, what I don't see is any additional protocols of any substance being sent our way. So 
the state law, I'm going to lastly point out, says that come second semester, we've got to integrate in. Based on a plan I saw Monday night, we're providing teachers with an opportunity to get acclimated into their environment. Who wouldn't want to do that first? If I wait to reevaluate this at the end of the semester, they're not going to have that luxury because the state's going to say we have to bring them back in hybrid. And our parents aren't going to have a chance to adjust to it either. We're talking about November, to be clear. We're not talking about next week. And we already have children in. So those teachers, of course, they're probably not comfortable. No person that has to go to work in person is probably com comfortable nowadays. Yet we have to rise above the fear and recognize our role that we play to get us to recovery. We're still in response. We need to get to recovery. We have an obligation to educate, and education is just as valuable and as important, 10 times fold, than those others going back. I don't see how more risky it is for a cat teacher to be teaching. High schoolers, which are a lot more engaging and a lot less obliging to rules, no offense, Mr. Smith, but typically this is when you're finding yourself, right? <laughs> In all intent and purposes. And I just got to say, um, the third grade class, yes, we've demonstrated as messy as it is, we can do it. Our kids that do want that choice will be making that choice based on things like start times and stuff. We're basically saying, because we don't like 100% of this, that we're not going to give anybody an opportunity. I think we have to take ownership to our education obligation, and we have to do it now. And I am fully supporting Ms. Ellis's motion, and will continue to advocate for those children who, to no fault of our education system, just simply cannot do the virtual and don't match the very limited, albeit prioritized, categories. We're now picking and choosing winners and losers, are we not? I'm not in that business. I'm in the business for all of these kids, and we have a chance to provide both virtual and some in person. Why would we not want to do that and leave so many of these kids behind? I am absolutely floored. Um, I appreciate the considerations of our staff and our teachers. And that trepidation is real and every single institution is working through that anxiety. It's real. It's real to every single person. And it's no more significant to a teacher than it is to the delivery driver dropping off the meds at the end of the day. He feels the same level of his anxiety, but his company is following the protocols, and so are we. That is why we are sitting here tonight. I don't usually say too much, and not for a long period of time, but I had a lot to get off my chest. Because the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking about it, those forgotten emails and all those families. And I will continue to advocate regardless of the outcome of this meeting and will obviously respect and fully support whatever decision. My decision will definitely be for Ms. Ellis's. It's about equity and it's about choice for me. And nobody, I don't think, <coughs> can tell me otherwise. Thank you. Is it me? I do believe we have another round, possibly. Ms. Schalheim had indicated an interest um, in saying a couple more words before we conclude. Ms. Schalheim? I'm not hearing you, unfortunately. Still not. Okay, now I can hear you. back uh, as soon as possible. I don't know anyone who doesn't. 
but we didn't survey based on the details of the plan presented two days ago. And we have not yet heard from parents up and down the county because a lot of us have 1,200 emails yet to read. Um, that's, a, that's a lot. And um, so I, I take, I take, I guess I'm not, I'm not offended, but I just, I, I think there's a, a huge difference between theoretics and actual details. And if we're talking about um, trying to meet the needs of, of students in the virtual world, and we've just gotten our heads above the waterline, to then say, oh, you want to stay home? Okay, well, you don't get to be part of your school community anymore. You can go to this virtual school. You will know nobody. I don't know who, who's, whose morning announcements will you hear. I don't know. We don't know who's going to be administering that, that, um, that school. Uh, you know, who the other staff will be. There's no relationships formed. And, and that's another ace. That's like saying um, you want to stay home for whatever reason. And it's not just, and this is not, I know people are going to assume that this is about privilege, but it's, it's not. I've heard from parents in, in, um, in, in District 5. I've heard from parents in District 6. I've heard from parents in districts, uh, pretty much all the districts, including students, uh, parents uh, at some of our Title I schools who say, no, please, I, want to, I, I need to stay home. It's for, it's for the safety of my child. Please don't also sever then my relationship with that teacher. And so I think we need a little bit more time to hone in on this. Mrs. Hummer's motion was to focus our attention on ESOL and special needs and those who need it most. And I agree with Drake, we need a needs assessment of all these kids because we don't know what we're working with. We have not asked given the details of our plan. Now we have some details of our plan. Now we can properly ask folks and take a little bit more time with it and not rush to a decision. I don't know what my decision would be if asked. You have to make a decision and your choices are send her back and and that's playing roulette with her health and mine my husband and my mom or 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 wait till the end of the semester but then you're going to make my teacher multitask between um, kids in the room and kids on the screen which theoretically sounded great to me until i really thought about it i don't know how you do that with a pre-k class or stay home the rest of the year and then you will know nobody and your relationships will all be fresh i applaud Dr. Orlato, I applaud Dr. McMahon, and all of the staff who worked hard and long, and this is not a judgment on you. Um, if I, I've been told that I said that I didn't know, wasn't aware of some of the things that as a board member I might've been aware of on Monday. And if I misrepresented that in any way, Dr. Orlato, I am, I am sorry. Sometimes it takes a while for plans to gel in my mind, and um, and you know that I'm not as articulate as some of you all. So, um, I just think we need to get really good at this and not pull the rug out. Um, and so, I just wanted to follow up with those with those thoughts. I also had this thought that you know we made these motions on Monday. Some of them failed. Some of the motions tonight are very similar. I do, I'm not a Robert's Rules expert by any stretch, but I, I do wonder about that as well. Um, I wish Darren were here. Point of information, um, both motions were vetted by uh, the board's legal counsel. Oh, good, great. Well then, then awesome. So thank you for clarifying that, uh, Ms. Corkadell, I appreciate it. So I just wanted to, to, to say those things. Um, you know, I, 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 I think we need to reassess now that we have some details. We need to ask our we need to ask our parents now that we have the details. We need to reach out to the communities that are generally underserved now that we have the details and get a clear sense of what we're working with, so we can try to maintain those relationships. So we can try to get creative with our transportation and and fix some problems with our start times and those elementary schools. And um, I just wanted to say those things and thank you for the opportunity, I appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle Heim. Okay, um, as indicated, we're going to uh, allow Ms. Hummer closing comments and then Ms. Ellis, Ms. Hummer. So 
first, um, as Ms. Schallheim said, we did take a survey in July and parent, most parents said they wanted to come back because everyone did want to come back. Um, with this pandemic, we see that things are changing every day. So I don't think anybody is basing their decisions on data from July at this point. Um, same thing with emails that we received in August. We hadn't begun virtual learning then, and now we're hearing from it. And I've read the same ones for families who are struggling. And um, that's why I say, let's focus our attention on those and not trying to bring back everyone. Um, for those who don't know, I was a teacher. I was a, te a special education teacher. I have I studied and worked and served children with learning disabilities and emotional disturbances. I have five children. Four of my five children have received special services in their careers in, in AACPS. I am very aware of the needs of our children who struggle in the classroom for whatever reason that may be. I take great exception to the implication that I am not concerned about equity and that I'm not concerned about bringing children back that need to be back. I believe mine is actually looking to do greater equity because it's not going to be, there is a choice, but it's going to make sure that that choice is going to help our students most in need. Yes, I mentioned our children with special needs and our English language learners, but I also said our children that are struggling with virtual learning, we know who they are. Their teachers can tell us that today we knew it this summer. We targeted children to come back for summer school and we got those children specifically and we worked hard to bring them in. We can do the same now. Let's put our in, the amount of um, logistical energy that it will take to implement the hybrid, to get uh, rearrange the classrooms, to do the transportation. Why not use that energy to really focus on our most in need children and get them back in or, as I said, providing the resources that they need to help them be successful. To me, my plan is definitely the more equitable because rather, rather than worsening disparities, we are going to be targeting and looking to close those disparities. Um, Ms. Antoine said, some, all, few. We can't serve just some. We can't serve just few. We need to serve all. I believe that by tar continuing virtual for the most, we are able going to be able to reach those some and few even better and bring them in. Um, we need those children to receive what they need to have. And it, it may be in person in the classroom and we can target maybe the additional tutoring. It may be helping their parents and sitting down and helping their parents one-on-one. -on -one. Our school system's already doing that. We're gonna continue to do that. I believe remaining virtual and focusing our energies there will be, allow us to do that even more as we move forward. For me, this is about what is best for all of our children. How can we best serve them? How can we target our resources to do this? And um, I, I, in a hybrid thing, we are gonna upturn everybody's apple cart for not necessarily a better product. We have a chance to make a better product. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to talk fast. I just have a couple of points to make, and I would like us to vote. Um, first of all, uh, the mental health task force and, and uh, County Executive Pittman being here um, was really a wonderful compliment uh, to what we're doing here. Um, Mr. Pittman mentioned um, the isolation um, that so many are experiencing with COVID and the uh, effects on uh, mental health. We're addressing that here. We're giving parents a choice for those who need it. Um, he also uh, talked about um, asking us to listen, that he still supported the plan to go hybrid, but to please listen. And that's what, that's what this motion does. It indicates that we listened, we want to incorporate the concerns that were expressed into the plan and to oversee it and make sure that it is the best that it can be. We can have students remain in their classes and have virtual TAs helping with the uh, online classes. Uh, we can have our remote teachers who are not able to return to the classroom helping with those online classes as students remain in their classes. Wherever we have gaps, we can have parent 
volunteers where a parent who is sitting alongside their child in the vir virtual classroom can assist students who need help while that teacher is in the classroom teaching. We have solutions for all of the problems uh, or concerns that were expressed, including, one more time I repeat, students can get up and move around and interact for a developmentally appropriate education, just as Dr. K indicated. Um, and finally, I want to mention um, equity. Um, we have students who have a lack of caregiver support, who um, are many of our youngest learners just cannot go uh, thrive in this environment and need that one on or, or that in-person interaction and support from their teachers. I don't know who's aware of the language gap, but that is when students uh, arrive at school having less language experience, just having heard fewer words in their lifetime than other students. And that gap is made up in those earliest years of education. Um, we have students going to private school who are attending school and interacting and having a normal education. That's an equity issue. Our public school students deserve that. We are not forcing anyone to do it. We're asking for a choice. And one final thing about equity, if we only bring in special students, we are segregating them from the normal classroom experience. So um, for all of those reasons, I am thinking of our students when I propose this motion and I would like to vote. Okay, we have concluded debate is concluded Pre as well as the fi final comments. May I uh, well, we I, had, uh, I asked for last call and then we allow our per the presenters of the motion to give their last comments because it belongs to them. So I think that would be um, a, a disservice to those who have just spent that time to speak. Um, I would need to reopen it for everybody to have a chance to possibly and then go back to our two people for conclusion again. You are correct. I'm sorry. No, so new no, no you can do it. I'm just saying it, it will. I, I'm going to have to broaden it out to make it equitable because usually that's why we call that so that the people who spent the time working hard on the motions have the final say. You are correct. And so uh, no, no further comments. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Uh, uh, OK. All right. So you're good. OK. OK. All right, we are now ready to go to vote. And just to recap, because we did have a couple minutes mm. of debate time, what is going to occur is we are going to take vote in roll call order. No individual is supposed to be making comments prior to their votes. That is what the debate is for. And so particularly because we have options that we are choosing, I will ask all members to extend the courtesy to one another and do so. So when your name is called, you say either option one, option two, or no. Madam so those President. are the choices. In other words, you do have a choice to vote for neither option. That is always a choice. You can abstain um, otherwise. Can we clarify? Madam that? President, point of order. Yes, um, sir. I don't know, option one versus option two. Right. It, it, it's Ellis versus Hummer motion. I, I, uh -huh. I just want to make sure I, if we say that. Yeah, I was, I was getting to that. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so I was going, yeah, I, I have a couple more things here. Just to make sure we do stay on point. Thank you very much, Mr. Gillen. I know he, he you used to sit in this seat and you know exactly <laughs> how easy it is to forget a minor detail turning into a major. So as I said, that is when it's called. We are now going to ask our secretary to please um, state the motions one more time, and it's option one, option two, and and then please uh, call roll. This is option one, no, option one is Miss Ellis's, and she is stating it right now. This is option one that we are stating. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Option one, in light of the information we have received this week, including Dr. Kaliala Rama's guidance input from the board and Dr. Arlotto's advice about phased hybrid and parent choice implementation. I move that the board accept the superintendent's recommendation to moving forward slowly and incrementally as he has outlined, recognizing that the board will expect the superintendent to continue to improve the plan with consideration to concerns expressed by parents 
and classroom teachers and will ex expect to receive regular pro reports on progress and any new developments at each of our future meetings and that we would reserve the right to request or approve adjustments to the reopening plans as circumstances in the schools may warrant. Just to correct the record, I'm sorry. Um, it's in, in, in light of in information from the public, not the board, public. Sorry, go ahead. As edited. Number two. Option two. I move that the board support the continuation of virtual learning for all students and the continued aggressive return of targeted groups such as CAT students, English language learners, and students with special needs to school buildings for direct instruction through the end of the first semester. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Please call roll. Ms. Ellis. Oh, Ms. Said I. Um, the Ellis motion, option one. <laughs> Mr. Grannon. Option one. Ms. Schalheim. Two. Ms. Antwine. Neither. Okay. Mr. Gilliland. One Ellis. Mr. Lyde. One option. Option one. Ms. Hummer. Option two. Mr. Smith. Option two. Ms. Corkadell. Option one. Ms. Ellis's. Five for option one. Three for option two. One for neither. Uh, option one passes. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Next time on the agenda. I, I, I got I to gotta train on this mic. Uh, Mrs. Uh, I'll, I'll get it by next. Um. May I? Yes, sir. So uh, thank you to the board for the for the um, uh, for the debate and the thoughts. So with us moving forward with the hybrid model, the timeline that was shared on Monday. Now that we have we've lost a couple of days, I'd like the board's permission to shift that timeline um, to work with my staff to shift the timeline when we'll bring teachers back and then bring uh, the students back. We're going to need more time, particularly for staff in the HR division to work through the accommodations needed for staff. Um, Dr. Arlotto, for point of information for the board, are you requesting a straight up two business days or a week no. or, or? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I would need to sit down with my staff. I would think that we would, uh, we would just go a week, that we would shift it a week so that I could have time. Uh, and I'm most concerned about making sure that I'm giving uh, teachers and staff an opportunity to apply for accommodations as they would need them and the our HR division having time to process those requests. Does the board feel that there is a need for a motion to grant the Dr. Arlotto the additional time necessary? No, I believe we rely on Dr. No. Arlotto's and the staff's professionalism to do it in the best of their abilities as okay. efficiently and as possible. Okay. President Corkdale, if I may, mm -hmm. please don't bring us back anything that's in safety. We were lives at stake. I Whatever you all decide professionally as the way forward, be confident in that. Otherwise, time is wasted and these students are not being appropriately educated. That would be the only objection I have to that. Also, let's get input from outside of you. If, uh, let's get it in. Let's involve everyone. These are critical times. I want to, I would like to respond uh, and, and thank you, Ms. Antoine. It is, we have complete confidence in the plan we've put forward. The plan that was presented on Monday and the plan that this team has developed, we have complete confidence that we can implement it. I also, as I've said now several times, I want to be completely honest with this board and with the community that there will be changes involved in the implementation of the hybrid model. A, a student's time during the day, a student's life and a family's life that they have now gotten used to over the last four weeks is going to change. Good, bad or indifferent, I just wanna be very clear with the community that that's going to happen. That's what I mean by messy. But I assure you we have confidence we can make this work. I, I 
understand that, Dr. Arlo. I, di I understand it differently tonight. What I am sharing is, had we voted for this Monday, as looks like we voted for it tonight, it would have moved forward on something that was not the most viable solution for our system and especially our students. So when we go in and do the I, I need to call a point of order. We're redressing into the item that was closed. Got it, Dr. Got Dr. It. Alotto has presented I made my a statement. Thank uh, you. Dr. Alotto has presented with us an a inquiry and based on the motion we just passed, that is well uh, he is following that motion <laughs> by asking the board. So um, I think under the circumstances, we just need to make a motion and get this quickly disposed of so we can I move have along. A question, Madam, Ms. Please. Ms. Ellis, please. Madam President, I move I that question, in light please. of uh, the superintendent's recommendation <clears throat> that we shift the hybrid model that was presented on Monday evening by one week. I have a question, please. Can anyone hear me? Hello? Do I have a second? Can anyone hear me? God damn. Second. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second. Um, do we have any debate on this? Um, yes, we do. Okay. So we're going to go roll call order and just nod your head no if, you, if you'll decline, if you want to decline, Miss Ellis. Um, you're the motion maker, so you go last. I, so uh, we will be starting. Does Mr. Grannon have any comments on granting Mr. Dr. Alato um, the time that he is requesting? And actually a couple more days, so one week. Okay, I'm, I'm not hearing any comment. I do know that he was time limited. Um, so next is going to be Ms. Schulheim. I'm going in roll call order. Um, so, uh, she's, Ms. Schalheim's indicating an audio issue, Mr. Mosier. Um, if we, we're, we're going to stand at ease for a minute so we can reconcile and give every board member an opportunity to, uh, speak on the motion. Schalheim, I don't know if you can hear us, but we are stood at ease for a couple minutes. Um, to resolve it. Can you all hear me? Oh God, I hate computer problems. Oh, it's okay. But I'm so grateful to, to Mr. Mosier again. Thank you for not sending me off a cliff. Okay, we are still stood at ease for about two more minutes because everybody decided they needed to stretch. So okay. uh, stand by, we're going to go back to we're going to go back to live production at 
Folks, we're going to get back um, in order here. I'm calling the uh, one and a half minute warning. So everybody, please go back to your seat and uh, we're pretty close to the finish line for tonight. Okay, we're going to be resuming in about 45 seconds or so. We're good. Okay, uh, we'll, let's do a 15-second countdown. In 10, 9, I want to um, thank everyone for their continued patience. Um, occasional glitches do exist, whether in person or virtual or the combination that we are uh, blessed to have tonight. So um, my understanding, um, I would like to um, take a moment of pause, Ms. Schalheim. Uh, Dr. Arlotto um, felt compelled uh, to clarify some point of information before we proceed with debate to make sure that we are accurately reflecting his request. Dr. Arlotto. Thank you, Madam President. So I did get a chance during that break, thank you for that, uh, to the board to chat with uh, the staff that I have present about the alteration of the timeline. And so I would offer this to the board for your consideration is, uh, as, you knew, as you know, let me just recap, we had the 26th of October, the 9th of November, and the 30th of November as dates that we had planned on implementing as of Monday. With this delay, I would recommend to the board um, that we would bring staff in now on November 2. Mm -hmm. We would bring in pre-K to 2, the four grades, pre-K, K, 1, and 2, along with ECI on November 16. And stay with the November 30 date for grades 3 to 5. So the new dates are November 2, November 16, November 30. That Ms. would be the adjustment. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Alato. In light of this new information, Ms. Ellis, would you like to withdraw and resubmit your um, motion? In accordance with uh, what our superintendent recommends, uh, we would like to shift the hybrid model implementation to the dates of November 2nd for teacher back to the classrooms November 16th for pre-K to two and ECI students and November 30th for grades three through five. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and second has been made. Uh, since it is substantively different in its approach, the motion I will um, resume roll call, uh, reserving Ms. Ellis for last as the motion maker. Starting with Mr. Grannon. Mr. Grannon. Seeing no comment. Um, Ms. Schalheim. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right, great. So um, I had some questions then because this is the same plan and two days ago it was, it was characterized as messy. And I want to I want to know or hopefully get some assurance that we will not be separating our students from their home school, and that we will make an honest effort to correct the late starting elementary schools, the post nine o'clock elementary schools, in crafting this in in in, in our further improvement of this plan as um, I heard that there was some uh, ideas put forward by Ms. Ellis. I very, very much look forward to seeing those and reviewing them and, and hopefully approving them. But I, I wanted to get from you, Dr. Alato, 
um, some reassurance because my phone's been on fire for 48 hours and I do want to sleep occasionally over this is over these two issues. Um, Ms. Schalheim, uh, before we proceed with an answer, um, I need clarification as it relates. Um, we have a motion on the table for dates specifically. The item that was already voted on has concluded. This is a new motion that was requested by the superintendent to adopt three date adjustments. We are not re-entertaining debate on the merits of the topic that we had already concluded. So is, uh, I, I may be missing the germane of it. Um, so, uh, um, so if yeah, it is, if it is. Be very, very quickly we're gonna be surveying our, our, our parents and they, they need to know what they're voting, what they're voting on, what they're voting for and what the details of those are. And it's very, it, so this is timely, it does relate to the dates that they will or will not be sending children back potentially. This is all pertinent okay. relative to that. I just wanted to make sure because I, I, I thought it was, but I just thought I'd clarify because Thank we did have other crying. comments in post and I just wanted to make sure we're staying on top of our parliamentary mark here uh, to be appropriate. Um, Dr. Alato. Um, if you can address for staff. I, I, will, I will certainly try. Um, uh, Ms. Schalheim, your first question uh, referenced um, uh, uh, keeping students in their home schools. I think that we talked about that on Monday. The plan is to keep students in their home schools, um, whether they choose hybrid or the uh, full online version, uh, will keep them enrolled in their home schools. Um, there won't be any guarantee that they'll stay with the teacher that they have now um, or even a teacher that teaches in their current elementary school. I can't make that guarantee. What I can guarantee is after we get the data back from the parents and, I, and the teachers and I know after all the accommodations have been sifted through by HR, if we are able to match teachers um, that will be in the buildings with the students that want that hybrid model, we are going to do everything we can to um, keep that match together. Regarding your second point and transportation, uh, there are, I have no guarantees that we will be shifting any of our start times uh, at this time. We will, we will um, what I can tell you is I will uh, talk with our um, COO and our director of transportation and have them look yet again to see if they can, if they're able to make a shift to any of those late elementary schools but I cannot uh, guarantee that at this time. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm struggling over here, so I just, so I just wanna, I, I, what, I, what, I, what I need and what I hope I got was, I will try to change the start times, and I, I, I know that the student is still gonna be enrolled in the same homeschool, but that is not the same thing as not having any of the same teachers. And I'm talking about cultural arts, math, language arts, counseling, all the rest of it. it. It cannot not look and feel like their home school that is cruel to our children and 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 um, it severs all relationships and familiarity that they've built. And so I, I know that they'll still technically be enrolled in their home school, but where? It, will the will the morning announcements be with the school that is their home school under normal or otherwise virtual circumstances? I I think I I need some more assurances, and then I need this properly communicated out to our parents who have to make the the horrific decision between potentially putting their child in a whole new school with whole new cultural arts I, beyond all of it, and 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 perhaps risking uh, their health or their loved one's health going into school building. So I, I, I need, I need, I, I know you can change the times if you, if you wanted to and you tried because we're not transporting middle and high school kids right now at all. So that we have a golden opportunity, please don't squander it. I just need to know, I need to hear more, I, I need to, I need to feel more comfortable about about this, and then it needs to be properly communicated.
Thank you, Ms. Schalheim. Ms. Antoine? Um, thank you, President Corkadale. So what's on the table now is a different set, uh, a different timeline, right? And, and that will give you the time to get uh, additional input that you requested, right, Dr. Olato? Yes, ma'am. The, the real key right now in the timeline is, uh, there are so many keys, I shouldn't say that, but um, what uh, my HR division is concerned about, and I met with them earlier today, not knowing where the vote tonight was gonna go, um, uh, I assumed. Uh, so we are working at looking at date, possible dates, and we're gonna need more time to make sure that staff has an opportunity that if they so choose to apply for an accommodation, either childcare or uh, health accommodation for themselves or a loved one um, that is in their care, then we want to give them ample time to do that. So we'll be shifting the timeline a week back from what was presented on Monday. Understood. And this will also give you the opportunity to hear back from families and other and, and students in the public as well. Sure. Well, we're, we're all the emails you're getting, I'm getting, and we're reading them. Um, uh, and taking them to heart, but it's the committee's work to continue to plan. But the basic plan that's been laid out is what's going to occur um, beginning on the 16th of November when we bring on our pre-K to two students. Okay, and that would be my, my main concern because those emails that we're both getting indicates that the details of what the plan has requires some reconsideration so even on the second if we move forward with that we're risking so much of what you have described as as messy so um my request um would be that we look at new considerations with this new time and in, introduce a, a plan that will accommodate a, a more stable hybrid way forward i i don't believe a more stable way forward exists at this time uh, again i I'm, it, it, i just don't believe it exists i think the team has done yeoman's work to develop what we have it's not perfect but it will achieve the goal of beginning to get our students and staff back into buildings for face-to-face -face instruction and so we can accomplish that um, uh, we will, uh, we continue to look at models, uh, if we need to make changes or we will, uh, I, I guess with this motion, we'll, before we make changes, I guess I'll have to bring them to the board based on what I heard this motion was. So as of now, the model stands. And if we make any changes over time, um, my understanding is if I read this motion correctly from Ms. Ellis, I will have to bring those changes to the board because I heard that the board would need to approve them. Ms. Antoine, can you, um, can you turn your mic on because um, the people I'm out listening and watching us can't hear. Thank I, you. I'm <laughs> very sorry for that. I, I don't want to miss words, Dr. Olato, but there was much, even Monday night, it was a timeline that I didn't agree to, therefore I abstained. And the timeline was based on the fact that the public was indicating that they didn't like what was going on here and wanted more input. So I, if they're sending you the input and you're considering it, those considerations may encourage change. And so that's all I'm asking, that, that if, it, if it warrants it, please do it. Fair enough. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Ms. Antoine. Very good points. Mr. Gilliland? Thank you, Madam President. My initial question uh, on the prior motion was just going to be about the impact of Election Day, but I, I believe the revised motion, Dr. Arlato mm -hmm. and his team were already taking that into account, so I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ladd? No comment. Okay. Ms. Hummer? No comment. Mr. Smith? Um, I know that this decision is going to bring up a lot of confusion within the community. So my question is, in this extra week that we have provided, um, how are you going to 
you know inform the public of our full decision will there be a informational video put out at some point or another where we can walk parents teachers and students you know step by step through the reopening process so I don't I don't know about a video we haven't produced a video yet um, what I'm running through my mind right now is I need to get um, a press release out and I need to get a memo out to staff immediately and so that's something that we're gonna work on because I need to alert them that they're about what's in place um, so that will be my immediate is to make sure that the public knows at large and that's a press release and that I tell my staff that means the entire AACPS community um, about the decision that was made tonight and how we will be going forward okay and I think you know after that step has been completed I think it'd be beneficial just you know just to put it in video form you know you can read stuff for ruse it hours and hours and hours but you you know, I think until people actually see what they're going to walk into, they'll still have some sort of trepidation. You, you are uh, absolutely right. Um, as you know, for the past seven weeks, eight weeks, I've been doing weekly videos on reopening and trying to give updated information as we have it on each week. I have purposely held off. Usually I'm filming that on Monday or Tuesday for release on Wednesday. Um, I had planned on doing something on Tuesday, but because of Monday's meeting and, and a decision was not made at the time, I held that video. Uh, so this might be an opportune time for me to script a video uh, and begin the explanation of where we are and how we're going to move forward that I could put out later this week. Great. And I hope, you know, after that first video, you do one where you're, you know, actually in a classroom, in a school, you get it where maybe you play the role of a teacher. And if you need a student, you got me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I have no um, questions or comments. Um, looks like we do have one more comment from Ms. Schalheim before Ms. Ellis concludes. Ms. Schalheim? me the the plan as it stood mm -hmm. yes ma'am the plan as it stood on monday was that it would be all of our teachers would return to their classrooms now the date shifting to november 2. okay and i'm sorry i just had one more question and this is all pending we have a case rate of less than 10 cases per hundred thousand uh per day is that also accurate no, I don't. I don't believe that's accurate. So, if so, so is it? But uh, yeah, I guess I I need to get some more um, clarification on that as well. That was asked a, a few times of me um, in the course of the night as well. So, um, is it would would it be between five and ten? I'm just I'm still like I said, it's been a long week for all of us, and we're all still digesting. Uh, I'm going to suggest we have on our website the exact PowerPoint that Dr. Kaliarana had presented to us, and that grid contains that information, and the members can pull it up um, at their discretion. And the Department of Health has the latest numbers by the day, I believe, and the Capital Gazette also reports on them. Oh, I know. I, w I watch them daily. I want to know what our threshold is for 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 going uh, for kids walking on the school buses on the 16th. Yeah, that is a, that is in the PowerPoint presentation that Dr. K had presented uh, to the board Monday night, and it is available on our website as well. And I believe all board members received an email that it was um, that it it was there along with the other couple PowerPoint presentations that we've received recently. Okay, um, Ms. Ellis, um, you have final. Uh, I have nothing more. Okay, nothing to say. All right, Ms. Howell, please call roll. Ms. Ellis? Aye. Mr. Grannon?
I believe he had to step away and has not yet returned. Ms. Schalheim? Aye. Ms. Antwine? Aye. Mr. Gilliland? Aye. Mr. Leib? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Corkadel? Aye. Motion passes 8 0. Thank you very much, Ms. Howell. President Corkadel? Yes, sir. Um, I guess a point of information. Or um, okay. We're, we're on, we're on seven. Um, we, we've just closed item 7.01. Um, Dr. Arlotto made a request addition and we grant those um, typically. And we are now on item 7.02, which was previously 7.01, the administrative personnel. Well, uh, well, it's not a point of information. I misspoke. Um, I actually have a motion. Um, well, and I think I kind of stopped you before we officially closed 7.01. You never said we'd move on. Uh, actually, we did close it, and then Dr. Alotto, after the conclusion, had requested that the board subsequently consider a new motion. Um, that is not, uh, that, that is postscript from the motions and the intent of the agenda. Um, if the board would like to entertain a two-thirds by two-thirds motion, you could add an agenda item. Um, on the other hand, I mean, um, I, I guess oh, I, I, without no, no, knowing no, 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 enough about it, I have uh, I have to find out enough information from the exactly requester. Exactly, is what I was going to say. Ask I would like to complete my sentence, please. Um, I'm trying to make sure that we are parliamentary correct and these questions uninterrupted would be appreciated um, for everybody. So I guess my question is, um, it, I, I would really like to see it uh, because we need to determine that because if it is, an, it, if it is, for example, you cannot make a motion to counter what we have already adopted, for example. No, the, um, it's you can, um, or, or or other conditions. Now, it, if it is um, to an amend, also to an amend existing motion would not be part of course because we just adopted it. So typically, when you adopt something, however, if it is germane to the reopening and hybrid and was not included in the previous two motions, I believe we could exercise flexibility in recognizing the motion um, and see where it goes. Well, um, it's, it's actually a calendar edition with, and it's germane to the reopening of schools. Is Next. it germane to the motion that we just passed? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just make it short. Oh, of course, no. It's not going to affect it, Dr. Well, Alotta's plan at when all. When we don't do it right, that <laughs> gives residents the opportunity to appeal it based on technicality. So that's why I have to always take the extra time, as frustrating as it may be for some members. Um, you may proceed, sir. Great. Um, being a true believer in the power of community input and seeing that the motion that the board did pass had language in it that discussed you know an improved plan was consideration to concerns expressed by parents and classroom teachers i move that the board hold a board hearing sometime before the 25th of november so that the community can provide input on the reopening of schools plan pre-november 25 is that yes. uh please i have not cleared it for a second i need to make sure i know them i'll say the motion. it one more time yeah please if uh, you wouldn't mind of course i move that the board hold a board hearing sometime before the 25th of november so that the community can provide input on the reopening of schools plan okay and so uh, our please michelle heim i'll call for the second um when ready I just want to clarify our, ter our terminology. Our hearings are normally uh, opportunities for people to present to us how they feel about something. It's a very one-sided thing, um, and there would have to be logistics. But that is typically, and, and we do that normally just uh, in budget, and then we also do that in redistricting. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, yeah, a board hearing is for okay. budget and redistricting Public. because, you know, those are big okay. things, and I think reopening schools in a pandemic, you know, could um, warrant that okay. type of attention. Okay. Um, 
I would just suggest one technical edit to add the word public before the word hearing so that it, it, it's a little bit more clear. <laughs> Accepted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion on the table um, to conduct a public hearing prior to November the 25th on the topic of reopening. And Ms. Schulheim, did you, would you like to second that? Yes, I would like to second that. And we can just call it a town hall and just move on. Um, uh, the motion is already stated, and it is a All public right. hearing. Let's just go. Yes, I second it. Okay. Um, we're going to take this in roll call order, starting with Ms. Ellis. Any comments? Uh, I would certainly attend the hearing. No, no comments. Okay. Um, Mr. Grannon, let's see if he's back. Unfortunately not. Um, not quite yet. Ms. Schulheim, comments to the motion. Um, I fully support this. Our public deserves to be heard when their lives have been upended in so many ways. I'm a solid yes. Ms. Antoine? Uh, Mr. Smith, the, spe the specified date of November 25th, what was the rationale it, for that, please? It was actually, it's by the 25th is what, how the motion oh, reads. Oh, okay, so, so I'm misunderstanding. So any time between now and the 25th. Yeah, it could be for t it could be tomorrow, you know, but any time. That was uh, a joke. No, it's not going to be can't. tomorrow. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. But any time before the 25th, and the rationale behind that is the 25th is when we start Thanksgiving break. Gotcha. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> we couldn't get the, the, the OMA notice out on time. <laughs> Oh, no, that's a state thing on the time. We we would have to start the hearing at 10 <laughs> Yeah. Okay, moving it along. Um, Mr. Gilland, anything? Anything, Bob? No comment. Okay. Ms. Hummer? I have no comments to make. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And you have final comment. No, any. no comment. Okay. Ms. Howell, please call roll. Ellis? Aye. Mr. Grannon? Ms. Schalheim? Aye. Ms. Antoine? Aye. Mr. Gillen? Aye. Mr. Lyde? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Grannon? Uh, abstain. Ms. Corkadel? I'm going to abstain. Motion passes. I, I just, I just for the record, I just like it to be noted. I was having a technical issue, and so it didn't, it didn't properly hear the question. That's the only reason I'm abstaining. Would you like the statement? Re would you like the question restated? It, it is a very straightforward one. I, I would very much appreciate that, President Corkadel. Okay, Ms. Howell, please restate the question. I move that the board hold a public hearing by November 25th for the community to provide input on the topic of reopening. Opening. Did you hear that, Mr. Grannon? Yeah, yes, and, mm -hmm. and that, that means the reopening plan that was adopted this evening? Th that is correct. It would be a public hearing that the board would conduct by the time date of t November the 25th. Right, so that's a hearing on the fact that reopening is being offered. Correct, it is to provide. Aye, 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 okay. thank you. Thank you. Motion passes 8-0. One abstention. Thank you. No. Who abstains? Oh, yeah. I usually abstain oh, when it involves um, being assigned to me because mm -hmm. <laughs> it involves it uh, on a direct thing. So I usually, out of courtesy, um, recognize the potential bias there. So moving along, um, item 7.02 administrative personnel appointments. Dr. Arlotto. Uh, there are none if for this meeting. Okay, and item 7.02, personnel, Dr. Arlotto. I've got 7.03. Oh, I'm sorry, 7.03. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, we're all, we're all keeping up with the agenda. Yep. Uh, I recommend the board approve the actions as stipulated on the attached sheets. So moved. Second. Second. Are we in consensus? Ms. Schalheim. Mr. Grannon, consensus? Uh, yes. 
Okay, we have consensus to adopt the personnel items in 7.03 as noted. Item 7.04 are the new course approvals, and I believe we have um, some staff, Dr. Alot. And a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And a recommendation. Go for it. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I recommend approval of the of these courses beginning with the 2021-2022 school year. And the staff is here, uh, staff is present to answer questions about these two courses. Thank you, sir. Well, good evening, everyone. I got to say, I, it, it feels like it's been a millennial. Um, <laughs> certainly. But I'm going to give you guys the floor to introduce and then we'll provide for board questions um, as appropriate um, and introduce as you are speaking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President, Dr. Lotto, members of the board. Uh, for the record, I'm Skip Lee, the Director of Curriculum and Instruction, and we're here to present, excuse me, uh, address questions you may have about the new course proposals that are before you. Uh, I'd also like to apologize for a typographical error on the documents you received before tonight. Those have been corrected and you should have a paper form in front of you. I believe Mr. Grannon and Mrs. Shellheim have had that document forwarded to you via email so you have the correct verbiage. I'm going to just make sure our, um, our administrative team uploads in the uh, public it's area where the agenda is to make sure. Uh, took care of it. I, yep. I knew it. We've got a rocking team. Thank you. Mr. Kaufman? Yes, the class that we're uh, proposing is the uh, PVA Business in the Arts. It's a business and leadership skills uh, for the creative entrepreneur. This is the culmination of a course that's uh, been several years in the works. Uh, this year's sophomores at the beginning of their, uh, their journey in the PVA program at the high school level were given a uh, expectation that in their junior year this course would be a requirement. This proposal is the culmination of that process uh, and that work. It's a course that's going to allow students in the PVA program uh, to learn business and leadership skills with a focus on creative entrepreneurship gives them the skills to apply what they have learned about the arts and creativity to any professional setting. One of the things that we felt was particularly important in our program was to allow our students to interact with uh, the business sector in a very real, applicable way, and understanding that not every student that comes through our program is going to be a career artist uh, as a vocation, but how their arts intersect with the world uh, how uh, our emphasis on the creative process and collaboration, if there was ever a time in our history where uh, collaboration and the creative process were necessary uh, for our young people, I think now is that time. Uh, so we, we uh, have incorporated this uh, course requirement for juniors in the program, mm -hmm. uh, and that is uh, across all primes because it is not a, not a prime-specific or discipline-specific course. So we'd like to address any questions you may have about the proposed new course. And while the I board is thinking their questions, thinking about their questions, Mr. Kaufman, would you introduce yourself to the board? I'm please? sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. My name is David Kaufman. I'm the senior manager of the PVA, and I do want to acknowledge the work of Jennifer Gerald. She was the uh, teacher specialist. Uh, she is the teacher specialist in the PVA office who really took the uh, spearheaded this uh, effort over the last several years. And I want to acknowledge uh, that she's she's at home this evening, but she uh, is with us in spirit, and certainly appreciate all of her hard work in getting us to this point. Thank you very much. Um, so help me understand a little bit. Um, th so this is specifically for the PVA magnet students? Yes, it is. And every magnet student, I mean, every PVA student, you said takes this? Will be in their junior year. So we, we it's, it's a course that this year's sophomores will be including in their course schedule. When we, when we handed out the, uh, the four-year plan uh, to this year's sophomores this class was embedded in the junior year as a ex as a planned expectation upon pending board approval and can you explain uh, i'm a very interested pva parent I sure have, i have my fourth pva student right now so i know there's gonna be a lot of questions from their friends too so um um can you explain i guess the rationale why this became a requirement for all of the PVA students since we already have lots of different disciplines and I know we have a design and production prime so what yeah, so, you know so that makes perfect sense so it, this is really how the arts intersect with the business world not a, a design uh, production uh, prime specific so it's we, we have guest artists in the community uh, 
working on branding initiatives, being able to understand how our students uh, can prepare uh, for college and community involvement in the arts. Uh, there's uh, the, the emphasis on professional etiquette, verbal and written communication skills, career explorations. So it's, it's really uh, helping our students understand that the artistic world is embedded in more of our business world than just the arts uh, as a primary vocation. Well, it does sound like a very exciting uh, offering. So thank thank Thanks. you. Thanks for explaining that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm forgetting roll call order. So it would be uh, Miss, oh, no, Mr. Granite. Uh, Ms. Schalheim. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Uh, not barely. We can't. I mean, I can hear your voice, you but we cannot again? hear you. There we go. That's better. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I just want to say thank you, um, as always, um, for uh, presenting us with these new courses. I, I tell you, every time you all come and, and bring us new amazing courses, it, it's truly one of the highlights of my, of my job. It's, um, it's the highlight of my reading of my online board packet, I can tell you that for sure. And I'm always just in awe of the amazing classes you're able to put um, together. So I just wanted you to know what a fan I am of you and I'm really sorry you all, you all had to wait through the rest of this to, to get to um, a much nicer part of this of this meeting but um, I just wanted to express my gratitude um, we're, our students are lucky to have you um, and uh, and and keep the ideas um, and these amazing courses flowing thank you so much it's truly our pleasure Michelle Hunt. thank you Thank you, Ms. Schalheim. Ms. Antoine? Thank you, President Cofield. Thank you, as always, for your great work. Um, I had a question about, I, I appreciate the introduction to the PBA um, um, magnet programs first. Uh, however, there are many students interested in taking up theater outside of P. So I'd like to, if we could address the, mag the PVA first, I'd like to also introduce Mr. Abbott, but in order, if that's okay with you. Oh, um, then I'll, I, I'll stand by then. Thank you very much. No worries. So, so back to PVA then. Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you for letting me know that. Uh, for, the, for the PVA students, um, so my understanding now is that it will be a, a choice for, uh, not a choice, it's not elective for them. That, that's um, correct. It's, a, it's, it's, it's embedded in the curricular expectations for all students in the program. We're, we're trying to give them all that uh, expectation of having a well-rounded understanding of the, uh, oh, of the role. Oh, understood. That, so this, uh, okay, got it. So, so if a student hypothetically is just plain not interested in this and doesn't, isn't successful in this kind of production, right? Yeah. If that's the case, how does that affect their status with the PVA program? Yeah, so if, if this is a course, uh, so this is just uh, like any other uh, graduation requirement would be embedded into their sequence of studies. Uh, and so this would just be one of the courses within the program that a student would be expected to complete. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gillow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Gillen. No, no problem. Thank you, Madam President, Madam Vice President. Um, it's a great course, but uh, Mr. Lee, I, I just want to take a moment of personal privilege because I, I um, uh, it's probably the last time you may have a new course to present before mm -hmm. I. Maybe I one or two more. Maybe one or two more <laughs> be before December. Yeah. Well, now I, I, I can't leave the punchline for, for another month, but I, I just want to um, take a moment I, I think over five years, you, you've probably brought 50 plus courses. It's been a lot. Um, you know, to, to the board, and I just wanna thank you and your entire team for the work that you do day in and day out, um, but, but especially uh, for the work that you've done over the last six plus months to redesign and redevelop 
<laughs> and redeploy uh, or even deploy for the first time um, courses for um, uh, courses that are suitable for online as well as blend it. Uh, and I just think your team does amazing work. And you know, the, the testament to, to much of this beyond the people, because I, I think that's critical to start with, but you have some of the sexiest names <laughs> for these courses. <laughs> And um, that says a lot too, um, because it, it, it's better than seeing something that says Algebra 1. <laughs> you know, it, it of course might say it, we're going to make math exciting again, but it's Algebra. You know, but I, I, I really just wanted to take that moment, um, just in case we don't get to meet here formally. Um, thank you for your work. Well, you're very welcome. I have a great team around me. Uh, I get to work with Dr. Olato and Dr. McMahon and uh, Ms. Batten all the time, and uh, our work and the passion that we bring is for the students who is who are ultimately our customer and I appreciate you pointing that out. The work has been hard. I will not step aside from that, but it's been very rewarding and we're glad we are where we are today uh, over the past uh, seven, eight months with the work that we've done. So thank you for taking the time to say so. Thank you, Mr. Bjorn, Mr. Leib. No questions or comments, thanks. Ms. Hummer. Yes, I just echo the others. I love seeing these classes that combine passion with practical, you know, to really help them to be successful in what they want to do if they want to pursue it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Hummer. Mr. Smith. Well, Mr. Lee is always a pleasure, and Mr. Abbott and Mr. Coffer, it's nice to meet you both. Um, just first off of what um, Mr. Gilliland said, if, if your office can somehow make algebra one a fun exciting even a sexy name <laughs> um you deserve a raise <clears throat> we'll know, work on even it. to jim i don't know that's that's the big task i want every student to walk into algebra one and hear the name say wow <laughs> yeah i'm but, on it <laughs> uh, <laughs> i just want to say that um it sounds like a very exciting course but um my question just has to do with I guess course requirements of PBA. I'm in the IP, IB program, so I know all too well about course requirements. Um, I guess, what addition will this have to a student's schedule? Um, how many, I guess, required course, courses do you need to take in PBA each year? So, so we, we have a schedule that factors in what their graduation requirements would be, okay. some degree of flexibility. We also have, as part of our required instructional day, is our extended day program. Okay. Uh, so that's all built into uh, what they're required. We made sure that this, this is a, a half credit uh, requirement, so it's a one semester course. Uh, so we made sure that it fit within the sequence. Uh, the timing of the, of the course occurs in the junior year in part because of the uh, preceding their internship experience. So the idea is to lead logically into uh, that part of the experience so that they're a little bit better informed going into their internship uh, as to the, the, the space that they've got in, in the uh, business world with regards to their artistic endeavor. Okay, great. You know, once again, it sounds like a very exciting class. Um, in the choir, they told me to sing solo, solo they couldn't hear me, but um, I did play a mean trombone. So I'm really excited for the PVA <laughs> students that get to take this class. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. And you put a smile behind this mask, I might add. <laughs> All very true and clever. Um, I, have no, I have no questions or comments, just extreme gratitude. Um, and I think one of the reasons Anne Arundel County is so successful is because of all the hard work you're doing to keep us current, to keep us fresh, to keep us engaged, to keep our students engaged, and continue to build upon our successes, to build better and better and better. And in this transitioning crazy world, I can just imagine what that looked like down on the ground and out in the field. I wouldn't suppose it, but I definitely appreciate it and I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. Well, it's an honor. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Mr. Bob Abbott. And if I don't, uh, I'm going to take a little privilege here. And Ms. Hummer used the word passion in her um, response to the courses that we bring forward. It was an idea floated by Dr. McMahon about four years ago about touching the passion for students in Anne Arundel County Public Schools and giving them an opportunity to dabble in this and take a little of that without having to take an entire semester to figure out whether they like something or not. So Mr. Bob Abbott, a 23-year veteran here in Anne Arundel County who works at Arundel, you wouldn't know that by his uh, face mask, um, is here to talk to us about a passion course called Theater Tech. Bob? 
So the course is actually called Theater Technology and Management. It's the magic that brings the stage to life. A lot of times during a stage production, when we're attending a performance of it, we only notice the performers on stage, but there's so many aspects that actually happen behind the scenes. And what we were trying to do with this course is actually target some of those students that needed to fulfill their fine art credit, but really necessarily weren't interested in the performance track, but might have been possibly interested in the technology track. And possibly some of the aspects of the course is going to cover lighting and sound design, costume set uh, construction, stage and theater management, promotion, house management, and stage management. You know, the end goal for this is actually piggyback this with a theater class that's going on so the students could actually work in tandem to actually help put on a live production. Um, the team at Arundel, uh, and under the leadership of Gina Davenport, we actually did align all these thoughts uh, to the Maryland State Fine Arts Standards, um, mainly the theater, but we'll achieve through the Accessional and Common Core Standards for English and Math. So essentially just trying to get the students a chance to actually discover a career path, possibly. Thank you, Bob. He's be, he'll, he'd be welcome to enter any entertaining okay. questions. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, real quick roll call order. Yeah. Mr. Abbott, I know Mr. Abbott to be a, a marvelous expert in this area. He's a marvelously talented musician, a music teacher. Uh, his wife is equally talented and he has two talented <laughs> children. So uh, you are an expert in uh, the theater realm. So um, this, um, this is an awesome offering for our students. I know, um, how much um, our drama companies um, enjoy. Um, there's a lot of kids who get, who get to enjoy the behind the scenes of the production and um, to, to have an actual course in this to really teach them. Um, I, I think it's extremely exciting and I wanna thank you for offering this. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you very much and for the kind words. <laughs> I had a feeling Ms. Ellis wanted to say at least a little <laughs> something about this one, <laughs> given, her given her passion. Um, all good. Um, Mr. Grannon, any um, comments or questions? Uh, seeing none, Ms. Schalheim? Uh, only that I approve. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for presenting. And thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, Miss Antoine. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Abbott. I I um I appreciate the descriptions of this course and and you answered the question and your presentation, so I have no questions. Thank Exciting. You very much. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Antoine. Mr. Gilliland. Thank you, Madam President. I do have a serious question, but before we get around to my friend, Mr. Drake again, uh, Mr. Smith again, <laughs> earlier tonight, Ms. Antoine said, who's gonna make you laugh, uh, make her laugh when I'm gone? There's your man. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's true. Uh, I love him. Um, my, my one question though, in, in a serious sense, um, is, is with regard to, to this course and, and perhaps even others, because I, again, dynamic course, but we're not in Orlando where we've got, you know, that magical place right next to us and, you know, certainly school systems and colleges and universities can form partnerships with an entity like that, or many of them do, you know, Central Florida, you know, wh wherever yes. the case may be. Um, do we work with um, outside entities that, that give the students the opportunity beyond the, the stage and in, in the auditorium and the opportunities in the auditorium to have that hands-on and then part two of that, because I know we've got uh, great internship programs, et cetera, in, in other content subject areas, but um, are, are there opportunities when students leave um, AACPS to then move into an entity or agency that, that can support them uh, career-wise? To answer your question, yes. In fact, a lot of the resources I used to help develop the course on this, I reached out to friends actually who were students in Anne Arundel County. In fact, one student who actually went through Crofton Middle School a little before when I was teaching there. And he's actually a lighting design company right now. He works um, actually with four, four wall sound and light design, which is a company. But he also 
designs, actually it's Ryan Dusak. He actually does the lighting designs for most of the lighting and dance competitions in the county, works at the Hippodrome. So he's professionally working in the field. Some of the stage management friends, some of the, I've actually had a chance to work on some actual equity productions. These are actually union productions that actors and actresses use and uh, as a union initiative myself. You know, it was nice being able to tap into some of those people that were actually some of the professional stage managers there when I was writing this. And so the resources that I was getting was there and the partnership in the communities there. Um, the arts is one of those areas that's neglected. And I think this is one of these ways that we can kind of bridge a gap within the community to reach out and actually tap into some of these resources. I mean, we have two major cities that are on touring companies list between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. with plenty of musicians, actors, lighting design, sound design people even you know, union dressers who were actually the people who actually designed the costumes. And I know most of them would be more than willing to come out and actually go for that if they were asked. Awesome, I, I appreciate that. And one of the other reasons I asked too is it, it, it gives some sort of um, a positive injection into those organizations as well. And I know Mr. Kaufman from your prior role here, um, you know, just we see what's happening with the BSO for instance and you know, a lot of negative news just about you know, the, 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 the funding falling and, and I don't know you know why at, 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 I, yeah. out, out above my pay rate to, to know what's going on there but um, I, I just think these courses um, offer the opportunity for students to say you know what that's a pathway I can take and I think what that might do whether it's Na Annapolis Symphony Orchestra BSO Hippodrome Lyric etc um, I, I think it just brings excitement to those organizations and, and then creates passion uh, a, a around the art that happens in, in those organizations. So my, my, my question was, you know, driven certainly by, by what's happening here, but then also the opportunity that, that it might pose for some of those partners. Yes. So, so thank you for this. Yes. And, and, and if I can, uh, one, one of the spaces that the, that the PVA program takes with regards to community engagement uh, is really fostering a lot of those partnerships, but it's what's been fantastic is seeing how, in addition to the relationship they have within our program, how those relationships expand out into our other schools. So uh, the opportunity to, to really uh, maximize those partnerships and those experiences is, is really, uh, has been exciting in the couple years I've been in the program. And I thank you for that. And, and Mr. Lee, uh, you know, I, I, I noticed you, you mentioned that Mr. Abbott was a gifted musician, but you didn't say anything about Mr. Kaufman. So is that's because Mr. Abbott is a gifted musician. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. I'll be putting the check in the mail for you for that one. Yeah. Are you good? Uh, just carrying on with what uh, Terry began. Uh, have you considered uh, the possibilities of what uh, Maryland Hall could add to this since we are we are the tenant I mean we own that building and they're very active in the PVA I know so it, I it would be a wonderful could. opportunity to actually take the students and let them see some different designs that's going through the technology is evolving you know I, yeah. even from when I was in school college seeing what's out to even what the gap is now it would be great to actually give the students the opportunity while we're able to be back safely to go back and visit those places so we can learn from the experts in those areas. And you've, have you considered or reached out to uh, Maryland Live? No. Uh, but that's Maryland Live receives some tremendous tax benefits from Anne Arundel <laughs> County. Uh, and uh, I think that might be something we'd be very curious to see how they might react to an opportunity such as this. Because they would definitely be, I would think, state of the art. Yes. And, and what they're doing out there. So, so Mr. Anyway. Live, in one of my other roles, I oversee the CTE program. This uh, Tammy Diedrich does okay. our internships. I will take that exact thought tomorrow morning back to her and see if we can start with seeking a partnership in, in that domain. So Super. thank you for that. Thanks for bringing this forward. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Live. Ms. Hummer. Yes, I just echo what everybody said and repeat again. I love seeing a passion being put to the practical to make it, you know, a possibility, more of a possibility for a career for them in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. Mr. Smith? I just want to, I guess, start with an anecdote. Um, I went to a, a school with this girl, classic bookworm, very timid, very shy. You know, you couldn't get more than two words from her at a time. They'd normally be to me, go away. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when she got to high school, she joined the drama club, and she wasn't, you know, the lead actress. She wasn't really on the stage, 
She was behind the seat. She was the people, you know, wearing the all black running in between. You could see their silhouettes and she had a ball. After that, you would just see her hanging out with the drama kids. And then I had another friend. He manned the lights. And let me tell you, he, I never knew so much about a tech light in my life until I started talking to him at lunch. So I just know that the magic really does happen on and off the stage. And that can do wonders for these students who might not be the most outgoing but who just want to, you know, help in some way. And I just, I'm just so excited that we had such forward thinking to make this a class. I just can't wait to see the magic that's really gonna happen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I only have one comment. Um, you know, I've, I've participated in several things in band and sports and whatnot. Um, it's an academia engineering club, um, but there was one there was one musical that I, uh, they needed a last minute fill in and they handed me the, the spotlight in the back, Big Monty to, to do and never done it before. This would have helped me, been a lot more successful because it was Annie Get Your Gun and every time they did the fake shoot up, I had to go whoom on up there. And I learned by trial of, of fire and a little bit of criticism, constructive criticism. <laughs> so I, I, I think the, the kids are gonna really appreciate this. Thank you so very much. You're very welcome, thank you. Um, seeing no further comments, Michelle Hahn, Mr. Grannon, last call. Seeing none, Ms. Howe, please, uh, we are now ready to entertain a motion. We actually did not get, we did get the recommendation, but we did not receive the motion. I move that we, I move that we pass the course as stated. Second. Um, motion and second, okay. Um, moving forward, Ms. Howe, please call roll. Ms. Ellis. Aye. Mr. Grannon. Ms. Schalheim. Aye. Ms. Antwine. Aye. Mr. Gilland. Aye. Mr. Lyde. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Corkadell. Aye. Motion passes 8-0. Thank you very much, Ms. Howell. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure, it really has. Thank you. As always, a pleasure. Next item is 7.05, the Eastport Elementary School third party project, fencing, landscaping, and signage. We're going to take a couple minutes um, for our staff to come up. So please stand by. Madam President, oh, are we on standby? Oh, um, motion to bundle items 7.04 and 7.05. Can we do that? actually be 05 and 06. I'm sorry, 05 um, and 06. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to bundle. Do we have consensus? Any um, any it deviation decides, from that? Solheim, Grannon, seeing none, seeing do none on the dais. Do you hear me? I do. Do you uh, hear me that I dissent? You don't have consensus for me. I don't want to bundle. Okay, um, we have a motion and a second. Um, we're going to then uh, vote uh, on that motion. Ms. Howell, please call roll. I'm sorry, can you repeat who seconded the motion? Uh, Mr. Gilliland. did. Thank you. Ms. Ellis? No. Okay. Mr. Grannon? I think he had uh, he stepped away for a second. Um, I don't want to bundle, nay. Ms. Antoine? Aye. Mr. Gilliland? Aye. Mr. Lyde? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Corkado? Aye. Motion passes 6-2. Although the items are bundled, both items will be able to receive um, equal time in their question and answers. Um, so with that stated, um, uh, I'm now going to turn it over to Dr. Alato for his recommendation and then we'll have a conversation about them. Thank you, Madam President. I recommend board approval of the two action items listed on today's agenda. Eastport Elementary School third party project, fencing, landscaping and signage as well as the Mead Heights Elementary School Kindergarten Edition schematic design. So moved. 
I have a motion and a second made um, to um, adopt the recommendations of Dr. Arlotto. Um, I believe for before we get into debate that the staff would like maybe do you guys have any anything to share? And um, we'll simply introduce ourselves for the mm -hmm. record uh, so we can answer questions appropriately, but we have no Sorry, presentation. Jason. So I am uh, Olive Chuck, Chief Operating Officer. Our kid's going to get COVID by going back to school, and she, or she might not have I need to call, to call it recess. Recess now. <laughs> Members cannot mute. They cannot participate when appropriate. It was an this error, and I apologize. For five minutes. Better not happen again. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I was like, but you know what? Because you can't see my lips. Normally I could just go like this. I know, I'm like, try to. Okay, okay. All right. 
Do we have her, Dana, test? Yes, okay, we're good to go again. We're gonna do a countdown in 30 seconds. 30 seconds of silence, please, for production. I wanna appreciate everybody's um, patience as we resume. Um, we are currently, just to refresh everyone's memory, we have a um, bundle of vote on 7.05 and 7.06, and we are now entertaining questions of an emotion to adopt um, both of them as bundled on the table, and we are now, and the staff has introduced themselves, and we are now entertaining questions of the board prior to the vote, starting with Ms. Ellis. In roll call order. Thank you. Are there any questions? I, I don't have any questions. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Ms. Ellis. Mr. Grannon? Seeing no questions for Mr. Grannon. Um, Ms. Schalheim? Yes, I have questions. Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can now hear you. Um, if you don't mind, I read through this and I was a little, I guess I'm coming at it from a perspective of, of normal school maintenance. And to me, normal school maintenance includes things like landscaping, fencing, and signage. And I was a little, this is a departure from what we've seen in the past where it's, you know, innovative playgrounds or things of that nature. And so I, I wondered why this wasn't um, addressed as a part of a safety concern um, with regard to the fencing and why this wasn't um, handled as part of school maintenance. So if someone could address that, I would be grateful. Sure, this is Alec Chekhov, Chief Operating Officer. Uh, what they are seeking to do is above and beyond what our norm and specifications are. Uh, for example, their, their fence is functional uh, it's up, it's standing. It might just look a little bit old. To us, that's a functioning fence and we would leave it in place. If somebody elects to replace a functioning face with a newer, shinier fence, and that's, that's a little bit up to them. Um, and a lot of the landscaping, many of the schools undertake these similar projects. Uh, the value of this work is, is above uh, the $25,000 threshold, but many, many, many schools do rain gardens, uh, butterfly gardens, a lot of other um, environmental ed accoutrements that they put in themselves. That is not something that the school board facilitates, so that is a typical activity. Uh, it's really the uh, marquee uh, brick signage and the new fencing that's driving the cost here. And those are not things that are a normal functional uh, maintenance cost for a functional item. Okay, um, but it is normal for a school to have signage and that signage is provided by us in the operating budget, is it not? So like when I drive by, gosh, any other school um, in my district, it would be Folger or Severna Park High School or, you know, Severna Park Elementary or Jones or Oak Hill, like there's, there's signage in front of those schools. To me, to me, part of what they're asking for it should be things that we are providing. So, can you address why the signage, or why the the delta, why they're why we're only charging them the delta between our normal fencing and the upgraded fencing? Um, because you know th this is a school. Um, I, I believe that that um, might be considered a little bit more cash strapped than some of the others. And, uh, and so I, I just found it a little odd that their PTO or PTA would be tasked with raising this money when it seems to me, at least um, in the normal um, course of, of school maintenance. Oh, and I've been, now I'm getting emails again that there's no sound on YouTube. I'm just wondering. So, so anyway. This, um, uh, so again, there is fencing there. It is adequate and appropriate. So the cost to replace that fence to the Board of Education should be zero. They are looking for new fencing of a much higher quality, so the cost is the full cost. 
My cost is zero, their cost is the full cost. So there's not a delta, or there is a delta, but the base number is zero. Uh, if you take a look at the Eastport Elementary School, it does already have signage. They want a different uh, version of signage, something that goes far and beyond what you're gonna see. It's in the exhibit. Uh, that is not the, what you would, res not what a 50, 60, 70 year old typical school would have. Um, they understand that. They wanna proceed with signage that's different and above what standard fare would be. And again, they are proceeding uh, with that at their own cost. They're, they're self-electing to do all these. So okay. my maintenance department I, did not approach them and said, hey, do you wanna do these projects and do you wanna pay for them? They initiated the projects. They are the ones that approached the Board of Education seeking permission and they're the ones that uh, raised the funds for it. But if, you know, again, the, it requires board approval. So if the board doesn't want the, the PTA and the Eastport community to do these projects, the board can clearly vote them down. That's the prerogative of the board. Right. Um, no, I'm not intending on doing that. I'm just, I'm just trying to get some understanding. So thank you for, for bearing with me on this. It, it seems to me that they're, according to folks, um, would, close to that project that there is not adequate nor appropriate fencing along fifth and chesapeake can you speak to that to that part of the 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 um campus specifically uh from my recollection the majority of that that campus is fenced in again i okay. i don't have the time right now to drive out there and check for you but my, my no. recollection it's uh, the majority of that campus is fenced in. All right, I mean. Uh, but remember that our, our ed specs for elementary schools do not have fencing at all. So the fact that they do have fencing already exceeds what the ed specs are. The, uh, the Board of Ed just approved ed specs for three elementary schools, Hillsmere, Quarterfield, and Rippling Woods. There's not fencing specifications in any of those three jobs. Yeah, but it's my understanding that this is along a busy road. Am I wrong on that? Because again, I'm not I'm not all that familiar with um, with the school grounds. I'm just I'm just asking questions. You know, um, no. I'm not asking you to get in your car and drive out there. I'm just I'm just wanting information as as a board member might. Sure, all of our schools are along a road. Some are more busy and and others. Um, so Eastport does have you know two roads that are more busy and two roads that are less busy, but. Um, you know, think about a Richard Henry Lee or some of our other schools. Again, we have many schools that are bordered on all four sides by roads. Um, many that are bordered on only two or three sides by roads and the speeds and traffic uh, configurations vary across our 125 campuses. So it will be hard for me to place this in some pecking order between zero and 125. All right, I just wanted to get an understanding. So again, I appreciate you hearing me on my questions. Um, I think it's important for everyone to to, to, to hear them, um, and uh, and I will never shy away from, from asking um, anything I feel is is necessary. And like I said, this this was a departure from our you know our standard, or at least what I've been exposed to, the butterfly gardens and the the special um, uh, playgrounds and whatnot. This seemed to be more more basic and more um, more more along the lines of what I at least envisioned as school maintenance. And so um, I definitely will be approving this. So don't, don't anyone get it twisted. I just needed to get some clarifying information. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michelle Heim. Greatly appreciated. Ms. Antoine. Uh, no comments, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Antoine. None, seeing none, seeing none. Looking across my other side. Madam, sir, seeing none. Okay, no more comments. Thank you guys so very much. Um, Ms. Howell, uh, please call roll. Ms. Ellis? Aye. Mr. Grannon? Ms. Schalheim? Aye. Ms. Antoine? Aye. Mr. Gilliland? Aye. Mr. Live? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Corkadel. Aye. Motion passes 8-0. <coughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Howe. Um, so uh, un unfortunately, um, um, Dr. Ar Ar Arlotto and I both misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, in following lead here. Um, we actually, um, and the board has received in advance and opportunities to, to ask questions. Um, we do have item 7.02 um, that we do have to approve. And so um, I'm willing to enter uh, first, Dr. Arlotto, your recommendation, please. Yes, ma'am, and I apologize for the mistake <clears throat> on my part. Um, we do have uh, three personnel that I'm recommending uh, that are listed on the attached sheets that I'm recommending uh, the board that they be promoted and or appointed. Um, so move with consent. I ask for consent that we, you know, do the appointments. Absolutely. Do I have okay. any dissent of the consent request? I want to thank Mr. Smith for saying that right. Usually most people don't say that much right. Um, okay, we have we have adopted item 7.02 as instructed by consent. Thank you very much. Moving along, we have a couple review items. Um, items 8.01, construction status report and awards of contracts. I do believe these two are, are separate enough that we should probably keep them separate. So I'm going to take item 8.01, the construction status report. Dr. Alato, does staff have any commentary to add the, to the materials? No, ma'am, there's no presentation, but staff is available to answer questions as needed. Okay. This is a review item, of course, so um, please raise your hand if you have questions. It looks like we do have a couple. Um, so I believe... Um, my first question appearing in roll, if I do semi roll call order, is going to be Ms. Schulheim, then Ms. Hummer, and then Mr. Smith. Ms. Schulheim? Uh, no, no questions. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to double check with Mr. Grannon, who I know is listening. He's going to jump in if he does. Not seeing any. Ms. Hummer? Yes, I just want to, um, as always, when we get these reports, it's incredibly impressive to see how many projects we have going on at any one time. I mean, there were dozens and dozens in there. And um, so I just want to applaud the facilities team for keeping up and keeping on schedule. And um, I always appreciate getting that report and, and being able to review all the good things that are going on in our capital program. So thank you. Thank appreciate you. that, Ms. Hummer. We'll certainly pass that along, and uh, mm -hmm. and they never missed a day of work. They've been on the job every single day, most weeks, seven days a week, uh, all through since the, the closure period. So I know that will be um, very well received by them. So thank you, Mr. Smith. Yeah, just one quick question: Are we experiencing any delays in any of the uh, construction sites with either materials or just a delay? No, we've been able to overcome any issues that COVID's presented to us. Fantastic. As long as we're not like the purple line. Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Smith. I just want to say I did, um, over the course of the last uh, couple months, get an opportunity to visit two of our sites. I'm looking forward to possibly a couple more in the coming months as well. Edgewater Elementary and Crofton High School. Um, no surprise, the ones in my district. Um, that so many parents are excited about. And um, I, I was so incredibly impressed. Um, you know, when you go in there, I, had, I was a little curious, like what does it look like construction with masks and social distancing and all of the other pr provisions, um, having spent many decades on, on construction, commercial construction sites. And I gotta say how incredibly impressed I was at the project management, at the teams, um, and, and, and just, you know, it was when people weren't looking to, just to be clear, mm -hmm. <laughs> not when we just walked into a room. Um, and the fact that, you know, we're staying on time and on top of everything, and it, it's so exciting to see the newness uh, as well, just because uh, that's a technical term, newness, of course. But um, thank you guys so very much. Um, yep. it, it's an incredible Herculean task. Anybody that's ever been involved in construction, commercial construction at, at this level, um, that is just amazing what you guys have been able to accomplish and to get us opening on time at Crofton, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm looking forward to the ribbon cuttings of both as well as um, Heights and Lee and, and all the other ones out there. Um, we're oh. gonna have a pretty busy spring, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. We appreciate it, we have a great team. I know you do, guys do. Thank you so very much. 
Um, seeing no other uh, comments, any uh, comments? Uh, next item is 8.02, oh. the awards of contracts. Any commentary? Um, yes. I'm Ms. sorry, Antoine. President Corbett. I pressed my button. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. When I glanced up, I just honestly didn't see and, it. And I was, I was, mm -hmm. it was, it was a delayed kind of thing on my part. So thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, we're, we're fine. We're, cause we're almost at the end here. Um, I, and just very quickly, I, I did want to ask you about, um, I saw in the paper a petition for us to name a stadium as we move forward with Carlton High School. Is that something that needs to be budgeted for before we can entertain the petition as we're constructing the high school? Um, well, so in, with respect to the process, we're the wrong individuals to answer that question, but there is funding okay. in, the, in a project budget for uh, signage for uh, stadium scoreboards, uh, entrance signage, so things like that are accounted for in a high school project. Okay. Um, Ms. Antoine, if I may, I think I can shed some light, uh, perhaps sure, a little bit more, e expand. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'm, I, I'm the answer to all, but um, the, in, the, in the course of things, um, the principal guides the community through a naming process and with the community's interest, just like similar to the naming of the school where they came, you know, um, they came to a majority and in the case of the school name, the board adopts the name. The stadiums, the rooms, the, the, the little gardens that will eventually emerge of rain gardens and whatnots and, and, and similar, that is up to the school community to handle and Dr. Arlotto oversees that. So yeah. that wouldn't be something typically brought to the board and it would be done the same in a very similar process, correct Dr. Arlotto, in that we engage the community, all the stakeholders in a new high school, my understanding is, is that the PTO and you know any naming of a stadium, whether it's an existing school or otherwise, would involve the PTO and the student body. So we have a student governments that all of this needs to actually get up and running. And then they take ownership to it. Because of the stage ends, that wouldn't occur automatically as if we had an existing um, high school. So everybody will have a fair say and an opportunity to present options and everything else when the timing is appropriate. Um, and as anxious I know as everybody is, um, you know, we just got the signature. There, there, there's a lot of these steps, but there are certain things structurally to ensure transparency and that all members of the community can thoroughly participate that do need to be set up first. Is that an accurate statement, Dr. Arlotto, for lack of? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, and, and so, so that helps with my, my question. I just, if we're moving forward to, to construct, I wanted to understand, so for example, if it was named in honor of Antoine and, and you, you want to put up a little building or something that talks about the life of Antoine, if that, if that was part of the process, but that, that comes after completion of the high school is what I'm understanding. Well, not just that, but we need the students in there and then not more than just the freshmen, I guess, for lack of a better term, and, and we have some sophomores coming in. I believe the whole school community will want to have a say. So, you know, we, they still got to set up the parent-teacher organizations gotcha. and the, yeah. all of that. All the faculty come in and everybody gets together and it's just as collaborative and successful. I mean, the name we adopted had whatever, well over 70% um, approval of the community. It, um, Principal Katie is awesome and I know she's gonna well address the community just like she did working with Dr. McMahon on signature and, and other such things. I know there's a, you know, I want it now, but um, most certainly the, the stadium's built uh, and, uh, I think yes. I saw some turf there, it was yeah. a little colder. Uh, not colder, really, hotter, I should say. <laughs> uh, but I did the quick drive-by, I didn't go up too close to it, but um, it's looking fabulous. We have not ribbon cut the, the school yet, so we've got a couple ways to go, but I know for a fact that the community will be well engaged and be able to have those conversations about which choices, because there is more than one out there. Um, uh, but 
the media only covered one of them that I, I've been hearing floating around, but they'll get that all sandwiched out, I'm sure. Thank you, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you both. Um, and then my other question would be, as I'm looking, is it looks like the last page concerning uh, Van Bocklin and Linthicum, Linthicum Elementary Schools, um, uh, specifically for Van Bocklin, it looks like it's 6% right now in, in terms of its current status. So my question would be, um, are there delays or why is it at the 6% with the completion of under a year now? We, we just we got the funding July 1st, so by the time we bid it out, brought the contract to the board and got mobilized and started out there. So this is oh, a so they just started. This is yes. a, a typical. Just, they just broke, yeah. basically broke yep. ground. This summer we just broke ground. Okay. So we just got the money to even get it started two months ago. So Understood. Two, two months ago. So that, that would, that's a pretty big dependency. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep. But that's it's on schedule. There's no worry about it being delayed or anything. It's right on track. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, President Corbido. Absolutely. No worries. On um, point of information. Uh, yes, sir. Really, it's just a comment. Um, it really doesn't matter the name of the Crofton Stadium. They're still going to get beat every time by the Mustangs. <laughs> just putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> just have to put that Ooh, out there. Oh, I hear a matter. challenge coming on for the Cardinals. <laughs> I think um, I, I think I can take that challenge on on behalf of of my peeps. So <laughs> it's game on. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Um, any questions on item 8.02 on awards of contracts? Okay. Seeing none. Mr. Granin, Ms. Schulheim. Final call. Seeing none. Folks, I want to thank everyone. A um, couple. Um, announcements on meetings our next general board meeting will be here on wednesday october the 21st 2020 starting at 6 p.m public co policy committee will be meeting also earlier that day at 2 30 and the budget committee um wrapping theirs up at 4 45 p.m on the same day reminder that some of the information and presentation materials that you saw tonight can be found on aacps.org in a very timely manner and with that i can entertain a motion to conclude so moved motion to conclude do i have consensus seeing consensus thank you everyone for a very successful first back to the dais meeting